Quincy Carter. Josh Booty. Both were superstars in high school. Booty was the 1993 National Player of the Year, while Carter was a 1995 high school All-American. Even with that success on the football field, both decided that baseball was their future after being high picks in the Major League Draft. After two years in the minors, Carter began his collegiate football career and recorded the best numbers of any Bulldog freshman. For Booty, it was five years in pro baseball, including a call to play in the show with the Florida Marlins. But this past January, Booty enrolled at LSU and two weeks ago threw more passes than any other player in Tiger history. Today, the two former stars on the diamond lead their teams on the gridiron. It's LSU and Georgia coming up next. It is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon in Athens as LSU makes a stop by Sanford Stadium for the first time since 1991 as the LSU Tigers take on the 10th ranked Georgia Bulldogs coming your way next as part of Jefferson Pilots' coverage of the SEC Bell South Game of the Week. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. Thanks for joining us. You know, Georgia Bulldog fans have a lot to be thankful right now. Their team is ranked 10th in the country. They're undefeated at 3-0. But this week, their emotions have been somewhat subdued when their offensive line coach, Pat Watson, died of a sudden heart attack a few hours after last week's game versus Central Florida. But as Cal, Coach Watson's son, said at a memorial service earlier this week, Coach Watson would want the Georgia Bulldogs to get after it this afternoon, and that's exactly what they intend to do. And a man that always gets after it is with me right now once again, Dave Rowe. And Dave Rowe, we'll begin to look at this particular football game. The quarterbacks stick out. Quincy Carter last year against LSU had his coming out party. Throws for over 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns. LSU didn't stop him a year ago. What makes them think they can stop him here in 1999? Well, I think people are going to try to stop him because nobody has stopped him. First of all, he kills you with his arm. He's got a very strong arm. And just when you think you get that great coverage, he kills you with that scrambling ability where he steps up in the pocket and runs for that first yard. There's two ways you try to play him. You try to bring extra people in the coverage like a nickel-dime package, but then you, then you only rush three linemen. The second way, and I think this is what LSU is going to do, they're going to try to drop, take away the short passing game, bring the heat, and see if they can back them this year. No, Coach Donnan hasn't been real pleased with his entire team with the exception of one Quincy yeah. Carter. On the other side of the football, Josh Booty makes the start today. He threw 58 passes last week or two weeks ago against Auburn. That's enough for two or three games. But nonetheless, Dave, it's his first start, and it's on the road in the SEC. Yes, but he's a very mature Josh Booty. He's played five, got a good solid head and grasp of the game. It's a little different problem for Georgia because he doesn't present that running problem that Quincy Carter type does, but he'll sit back there, 58 passes. Wow, that's unbelievable. He'll pick you to death. Well, we've got two of the oldest sophomore quarterbacks in the country going at it today. It's a packed house at Athens. Stay with us, our Jefferson Pilot Game of the Week. Dubai, Bell South, the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By Regions Bank, one of the strongest banks in America, now with more than 730 offices located throughout the South to serve you. By BMW, visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Domino's Heatway, fresh, hot, and delicious Domino's pizza, how you like it. By Nationwide, insurance, financial services, on your side. By Pram Extra Guard, the only filter with the rough textured Sure Grip Top. It makes changing your filter a lot easier. And by Dodge, see the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia, at Sanford Stadium. The LSU Tigers and Georgia Bulldogs getting set to kick it off in a matter of moments. But before we do that, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Greg Bowser. Greg, what do you got? Well, Dave, yesterday there was some concern about the football field because some folks got in overnight uh, Thursday night and damaged the football field. The grounds crew here from Georgia went out and did some work on it. They brought in some, some grass and filled in the hoes. And after that, they checked it out. Uh, this morning walked through and it looked fine. I visited with both teams, both teams and coaches today, and they both said they don't think the field is going to be any problem. They think it's okay, so the ground crew did a good job. We'll see how it plays out as the game moves on. There is Coach Jim Donner who said he was uh, shocked and upset about the situation with the football field. Jerry DiNardo on the other side of this magnificent stadium. Go head-to-head -to -head today, and we are just about set for kickoff. Danny Board. 
the senior from Bradenton, Florida, to kick off for the LSU Tigers. Freshman Terrence Edwards and Tim Wansley to return. It is a bomb that Edwards lets go through the end zone. Let's check out our Regions Bank starting lineups this afternoon. And for the Georgia Bulldogs, keep an eye on Jasper Sanks. After a very disappointing freshman season, back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games for this Georgia Bulldogs. The left side of that offensive line, Steve Herndon, Jonas Jennings, teamed up with the center, Miles Lucky. Very strong, about as good as it'll get in the Southeastern Conference. And Quincy Carter, the soon-to-be 22-year-old sophomore quarterback, is having a great year. He has, at times, single-handedly led yeah. this offense. Did you notice how calm he was yesterday when we were talking to him? I mean, you wouldn't even think this was just a, a scrimmage for him. Quick hitter, right out of the gate for Quincy Carter. It's about seven yards to Thad Parker. And here's our Regents Bank defensive lineup for the LSU Tigers. Johnny Mitchell had a great season a year ago, still having... Another good solid campaign here in 99 up front. A 3-4 defense for this LSU team, although they do a lot of flip-flopping with their personnel. Jeremy Lawrence gets the start today at the right linebacker spot. The secondary, the corners are very Thorpe award candidate. There's the defensive coordinator, Lou Tepp. It is second down and three from the 27. Jasper Sanks, oh, 55. Boy, what a look in the backfield for Jasper Sanks. That ball is going to go off left tackle, and he saw the he saw the right side of the line collapse and just made a tremendous cut back against the grain. Just a great pick. You're going to see him come back against the grain right here. See overplay right there, and he just sees the clearing. That's what you want in your running backs. You want that vision into the hole. That was a gain of 10 yards, Dave, and that's the kind of explosiveness they expected a year ago. Comes an audible on the line. You see him you tap, touch your hips. Carter, quick out, far side. Good defensive play up from that corner spot by Fred Booker. Read that extremely well. Thad Parker was the intended receiver, but he was the intended target of Booker in the end. I'll tell you one thing. Booker almost came in and took this football away. Watch this. A little job step right here. Now watch Booker, number one, close. He comes up for the tackle. If he goes for the ball, he might have had an interception. He uh, gave him a little jawing on the way uh, back up. Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator, came under fire a year ago with this LSU defense. Gave up a lot of yards last year and points, but thinks he's got it all figured out here in 99. Patrick pass. Seen the setback now in motion. Second down and 10 and 37. Over the middle. Pass a little bit behind the tight end. Randy McMichael, but a great catch. And another first down for Georgia, a gain of 22. One, McMichael makes a tremendous catch going right down the center. They go with no backs on that play. Carter's all back by himself. Right there in the right of your screen, you're going to see McMichael turn around and actually catches that ball behind him. The defender running back with him, and you can see the reaction. He's happy because they've had a lot of drop balls in this team. They have. That is a uh, the tenth catch for McMichael, the redshirt freshman. That is a topic that uh, is sitting the crawl of many of these Georgia coaches and the players really about the drop passes. Part of the options. Spence stopped at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard. Lionel Thomas with the stop along with Jeremy Lawrence. Yeah, they did a good job of stopping it at the point of attack, especially Lionel Thomas, number 28, sliding along that line, just keeping that play up on the line of scrimmage. Just don't allow him to cut up. There's the defensive signal. Of course, Jerry DiNardo, a lot of pressure on him. His team just did not perform well last week. They got behind so quickly, they could never catch up. Five first-half turnovers for LSU last week, a total of six turnovers. That was all said and done. Seven at home. Carter goes up top. Over the head of Johnson, who had beaten the defender. Well, that's what they're trying what George is trying to do, Dave, is they're trying to get matchup problems. That time you had Johnson 48. He's on one of the linebackers, and he's running with that linebacker, just trying to get that mismatch. The head coach and offensive coordinator, Jim Donnan. Frustrated, it seemed like yesterday. Yeah, it really was an interesting talk. He said, you know what that is? That's a sign that he knows he has a great football team, but they're not performing to the, to the level of play he expects. Third down and nine. Georgia's second in the league in third down conversions, nearly 48%. Two tight ends in the game. Shotgun formation. Carter back pass time. Over the middle looking for Edwards. Overthrew him. And Georgia will be forced 
to punt, I believe. Well, they're getting pressure on Quincy Carter early. That time, Carter in a shotgun. He's a little bit deeper than what he normally is. And he looks downfield, and he's got two big rushers coming right down his throat. Georgia will punt the football. Wincott comes in. Hap Hines, a field goal kicker, hit a 54-yarder last year right before halftime. Well, this is inside the 10. Oh, 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 golly. Georgia had a chance to get his hands on it. Jermaine Phillips couldn't stop it on the goal line. It's a touchback. 40-yard punt, LSU, and Josh Booty to take the field when we come back. We're scoreless. It's our Bell South Game of the Week. Picture this. We're scoreless early in the football game. LSU to take over. First and 10 from their 20. Josh Booty, his first collegiate start. He comes on the road in Athens, Georgia. Doesn't get much tougher than that. The fake reverse. Booty goes up top. Overthrows his receiver, Reggie Robinson. But a little razzle-dazzle out of the game for the LSU Tigers. Let's take a look at our Regents Bank starting lineup for the offensive team, the LSU Tigers. Rondell Mealy, just a horrible game last week. 12 carries, 23 yards. We'll need to get on track today. The offensive line has been a little mixed up, you might say, due to some injuries. Compton in at right guard today. And there is Josh Booty. School record, 58 pass attempts last week. Yeah, you figure he didn't start the game. He only played three quarters of the game. Loses a couple of yards. Marcus Stroud, Demetric Evans on the tackle. There is Marcus Stroud and Richard Seymour. The two tackles have been dynamite this year. And the linebacker, Boss Bailey, Will Witherspoon, and Arantis Grant. Don't get much better than that. Some great athletes for Georgia. The secondary, the safeties have played great run football this year for Georgia. But Seymour and Stroud have done it up front for the yes, dogs. they have. And they really come off the ball and talked with Seymour yesterday. He said, I want this opportunity. I love to get that pass rush, that inside, that inside swim move. I think I can get to him. LSU, 11th in the league in third down conversions, facing a third and 11 from their own 19. Booty steps up in the pocket, has time, doesn't unload, and he's sacked by, guess who, Marcus Stroud, his second of the season. Well, that was great coverage. Millard forced him out of the pocket. He steps up and then runs to the strong side, and Stroud comes across and just knocks him down. It might have been a good decision by Josh Booty. Because Millard, he's going to come up there and get the pressure. Now, step up, and he looks downfield. That may have been a good keep, because you throw into that secondary, you throw off that hop, you don't have anything on the football, and you throw it up the ground. Georgia brings the heat. No flag on the play, but a great kick. And Patrick Pass takes it at his own 25. Dodges a couple of tacklers. Spins out of another tackle. He's across the 40. Across the 50 to the 46-yard line of LSU. How about the effort wow. from one Patrick Pass? A punt of 56, a return of 26. Well, every coach that's ever coached this game tells you, keep your feet going. Now, look at this. This is a long punt. You can see the collapse in the pocket. Punter just falls down. That's not a penalty. But watch Patrick Pass keep the feet going. Right here, he's going to get hit. He's going to come inside. He's locked up. Look at him, just turning those feet. Keep him moving. Now he picks up a couple good blocks right here. That's just an excellent run just to get good field position back for Georgia. Well, thank goodness Corey Gibbs was on the spot, or Patrick Pass might have taken that for six. But great field position for the Dogs. Sinks up the middle, gets about five to the 40. Stop on the play by Jarvis Green, the sophomore. Well, I've seen Sanks run the ball twice today, on only, the first, only on his two runs, and I like both of what I see. First of all, in that one, he had that great vision to the backside, saw that hole collapse. That time, that's going to a point of attack, like off the tackle's tail. And all of a sudden, he sees that little seam open up and just darts through it. I love running backs that run up into the hole full speed. Well, Sanks is a guy that came in a little bit overweight last year. And it showed he only carried the ball 10 times. Flag is down at the 41. Sanks did get across the 35. Probably good enough for a first down, but a flag on the play. Illegal motion against Georgia. And boy, I can tell you right now, look at Jim Don, and he does not like that. He said... False start, right tackle, off end. Five yards, still, second down. 
There, of course, are our officials of the game, Dave, Ron Gilbert, the referee umpire Larry Leatherman, and the rest of the crew, an outstanding SEC crew. Well, we got 86,000 on hand today. This will be the uh, fourth straight game Georgia's played in front of 86,000. That's because they've played four <laughs> yeah. straight home games to That's open right. up the season. They always announce, of course, the crew, <laughs> the crowd exactly at the same. Big down here. Second down. Second down and 10. Fred Booker came up and disrupted that play. They were looking for Patrick Pass. But Fred Booker just came up and knocked pass about five yards beyond the 50. That was going to be that throw behind the line of scrimmage where you've got that throw option, that second throw option. But LSU reacting very quickly to the football. I think that Quincy Carter is going to have to go downfield those one-on-one -on -one situations. He was a little bit antsy in that first series. Might have been a little bit nervous because those are not normal stats of Quincy Carter. Quincy's thrown for nearly 800 yards, five touchdowns, just one interception in 1999. Third and ten. Oh, what a catch. What a catch. Tavares Johnson comes back, makes a great catch at about the 39, but that's about four yards shy of the first down. Well, watch Johnson when he catches it. It looks like it's almost like a baseball catch behind him. One hand, pull that ball in. Didn't have the first down yardage, but that's got to be a real plus for Quincy Carter because all of a sudden his, his receivers are catching the football. Of course, good blocks up front. Good block up front. Give him time. Fourth down, they're going for it. Absolutely. Georgia looking for their first fourth down conversion this year. In the shotgun, nobody back to help Quincy. He doesn't need it. He rolls out of the pocket. He's got room. Did he get it? It's close. He got to the 39 and a half, and he had to get, I believe, to about the 40. Or excuse me, the 35. I think they're going to give it to him, but what an outstanding move. He's got pressure on the outside, just right down his throat. Jeremy Lawrence, 32, is just coming right down his throat, and he just jukes him inside and comes yeah. back outside. Now, how about head to head? Look there, the hat, the hats are locked. You see that? The hats are locked, the face mask. There they go. Here, you can have yours. I'll take mine. <laughs> Well, Quincy Carter certainly knew where he had to get to. A heads-up play. He didn't have any protection back there, so basically he was one-on-one -on -one with the pass rusher, and he knew where he had to go, and that was the 35. Yeah. yeah, and he just made this on his own. He didn't wait for his blocker to get a block. He just knew what he had to make. Let me tell you something. He got a pretty good spot <laughs> yes, right there as well. <laughs> it's a home game, no. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is first and 10. Stutter step. Sinks. Stop by Lawrence. Bueno Sanks is a great story. As you said, came in a little bit heavy, just didn't really get into the mold, had great accolations coming out of a high school. And then all of a sudden, I can tell you right now that Jim Donovan and company got inside his bonnet and made him a football player. And there is Mr. Sanks. Well, folks, stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South You Call the Play feature. A look at a big call from SEC Games Past. Sanks came out about the same time Jamal Lewis came out, and it was basically... Who do you want? They were pretty equal if you ask most people. Once again, over the middle to the tight end, Johnson. First down, Georgia. Flag is down. That flag was thrown on the tail end of the play when the tackle was being made. Maybe that face mask. Face mask against LSU. Yeah, what Johnson did on that, he did a tight end drag. He's right here. He's going to just do a drag and then come across the field. And watch the perfect pass. You block now right here. It's tight end drag. Now you see the backers say, oh, there he goes. Just a perfectly thrown football. Johnson looks it in very well. I think that was the inadvertent face mask by Fred Booker, just a hand on the face mask. Well, the five yards is from the spot of the from the end of the run, really. So it, yeah. it marches the football down to the 14 and a half. Georgia in great field position. They moved it about 40 yards on the first possession, but it had to punt it away. This is their second possession. Sinks, nowhere to run. LSU defense stretches it to the near side, gains about two. And Johnny Mitchell, number 95, played really well. Slid along the line. That's what you want to do. That keeps that running back for looking for that inside slide. You'll see him come up here, 95, keep that outside position. Look at that, rip up. Now, don't allow him to turn back in, rush him. You keep on running him out to where your, where your support is. There's number 18, LeBlanc, who comes in there and just lays him down. 
Johnny Mitchell having another good season for LSU up front. Been steady in his two years as, a, as the main starter up front. Three wide receivers in the football game for Georgia. Shotgun. You see Quincy Carter back about a few extra yards than normal. Oh, that looked like a hit in the back before the ball. Whoa. Mark Roman hit Terrence oh. Edwards right in the back. No flag. Oh, yeah. Carter talking to the <laughs> freshman Terrence Edwards. Well, that was interesting because it was just a quick in. LSU elected to bring a lot of pressure. They're going to bring him on him and look Carter finds him right there. See when the hit is. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty close. Well, Roman is a guy that uh, <laughs> is considered one of the better corners in this country. Going against a guy playing in his first year here at Georgia. Eight plays so far in this drive. Third down and nine. Georgia 0 for 2 on third downs this afternoon. Pressure again on Carter. Unloads the football in the end zone. It was a floater, and Thad Parker couldn't catch it. Boy, and you know what? Carter has tremendous presence to know the backside pressure is just coming right after him. Jeremy Lawrence, 32, is just running down his throat. He's going to run strong side to his right, our left. Look at Lawrence on the backside, putting that pressure, and looks all the way across the field. That ball was well thrown. I mean, a little wobble on it, but again, very catchable football. Well, I think that Parker probably misjudged that because the yeah. ball floated. He thought it would be coming there a little bit harder. Matt Pines on for a 31-yard field goal. It is up, and it is good. And Georgia gets on the board first. Georgia leads LSU 3 to nothing. We'll be back after a message from your local stations. Georgia on a 31-yard field goal by Hap Hines. Lead LSU 3 to nothing. Let's check in with Greg Bowser. Greg? You know, they're wearing their white pants in a special. They lost Coach Watson. This will be on the back of their helmet in remembrance of him. And the coaches felt this was a special occasion. So you got George. Nike, the team sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs, and they were trying to wear these pants. Going to hold off to the ball game, but they said since uh, Coach Watson kind of meant so much to these guys that this was a great time to bring them out in honor of the offensive line coach. Kirouac to kick off for Georgia. At the five, Dominic Davis takes it up the middle. This guy has been dangerous on kickoffs. Georgia's special teams have been a little shaky this year, so... Dave is certainly a guy that could probably bust it out if Georgia not careful. Return of 23 yards. Well, the Georgia defense has stuffed the run to get great penetration on the line. And when the quarterback is looking downfield, this is a coverage sack. Nobody to throw to has to eat it. Down he goes. They're hoping for a little bit more out of Josh Booty in this series. I think that was probably a wise play there. Suck it up. Yeah. Punt it away. Let's not throw an interception. Exactly. Look at that stat total yards, though. Only down three points. So for LSU, it's got to be a little bit of victory. But they need to start taking pressure off their defense, moving and getting first downs. Rondell Mealy to see the setback. Booty throws to the near side. Probably gain one, maybe two. Robert Royal on the reception. Boy, good coverage by Chambers, number 29. Slide along. Keep on coming along that ball. Just run along there. You got that coverage. You can wait for him. You can gamble. Come up and try to make that interception. But don't let him get deep. Chambers and Mann, the two safeties for Georgia. Couple of good ones. This secondary is too deep at every spot. Oh, and there's too deep strong. Rudy hands off to Mealy. Mealy runs hard. Gets it across the 30 to about the 30. Four yard line. Orantes Grant on the stop for Georgia's. Well, I'll tell you, if, if LSU is going to stay in this football game, Rondell Mealy has got to play well. You look at his rush, you look at his yards. He is the factor in this game that can take pressure off of Josh Booty. He is eight on the all time LSU rushing list. As you saw, needs 100 yards to reach that 2,000 plateau. Kevin Falk leads the way at LSU in that category with, I believe, 4,500 yards. Third down and four, three wide receivers, booty in the shotgun. Bad snap, the great hands, keeps it alive, throws downfield. It's completed across midfield to about the 40-yard line to Robert Royal. 
checked at Ed Dangerfield. A gain of 26. I didn't know who Jason Underwood was snapping to. I mean, that's almost a snap on the run. What a catch. Watch the catch right here. Look at the catch by Booty. Left-handed now. Look downfield. He's got heat coming on him. He just, and he gets leveled there by Ed Dangerfield, number 89. But look at the pass thrown well. Excuse me, that's Dangerfield that caught that ball, I should say. But heat on him. Just a great catch off the line of scrimmage. Looking downfield, he's fearless too. That's the play that LSU needed to get this offense untracked. Royal in motion. Pitches back to Neely. Oh, the front oh. four <laughs> of Georgia. Well, and you got to throw Boss Bailey, number 45, in the mix, and Miller, 51. They're in the backfield. They're, they're getting penetration through the line of scrimmage. You, if you're an offense, you cannot allow that penetration on a running play because it knocks off your guards. They're supposed to block the outside backers. Our sleep-in scoreboard today, Florida State already up on Duke. Michigan over Purdue by 11th. That in the first, and Michigan State thumping Iowa. It is second down and 11 from the Georgia 41. Shotgun, Booty to the outside again. Can't hit his receiver. Jarrell Miles was the intended receiver. Jarrell Miles is having a sensational opening campaign for LSU. Let's check in once again with Greg Bowser. Well, Dave, the LSU offense, if you notice, they're not really huddling because all of the players, the offensive players, have on these wristbands that have all of LSU's plays on there. So the coaches signal in the number, they look down on their wrist, get the play, and hurry to the line of scrimmage. That's an interesting way to do it. Everybody has to look to the sideline. I guess you yell out five, and everybody knows that's the fifth play down. Third and 11 from the 41. The screen over the middle to Mealy. Watch him go. Inside the 30 to about the 24-yard line. Larry Mann runs him out of bounds. A gain of 17 yards and a first down for LSU. But Brandon Whiney, the right tackle, laying down in the big G about the 46 of LSU. And that offensive well, line, Dave, has been, well, they been hurting. They can't afford more injuries. You know, that time when I watched Josh Booty, I thought it was a screen. But I don't know where in the world he ever found Rondell Mealy, number seven. He's going to just slide up in the line there and look at him, just dump it over top to him. And then he just accelerates. But I don't know how he saw him. He had people in his face. He had his linemen out there. He just kept on looking, looking, and look at Josh Booty saying, that's the play we need. He needs to be the leader out here. Well, LSU has run some safe routes to get Booty yeah. comfortable on the road in the SEC. Is Even though he is 24 years old, let's face it, he didn't play baseball in front of 86,000. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> Not all screaming against you. <laughs> well, next week, folks, there's more SEC football coming your way. Our Bell South SEC game comes from Auburn, where Mississippi State will play the Tigers. The Bulldogs' Wayne Matkins has led his team to a 4-0 record and a number 16 national ranking. The sophomore looks to return to state for the SEC championship game. The Tigers have lost two quarterbacks so far this season, so freshman Jeff Klein gets the call. The Georgia native came in against Ole Miss last week and looked pretty impressive. Check your local listings for the Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your town, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Sam Forehand, backup tackle, comes in to replace Brandon Whiney, who steps out. John Compton, who was early, injured early in the season, expected to be the starter at center, is playing right guard today. Mealy, it's about six. I mean, they've had to really mix and match that offensive line, and it's really got to be difficult to get in sync, make the right calls. The kills announcers trying to do their charts, too, because all of a sudden you make changes and everybody's looking around. But a lot of different combinations. In fact, when we were talking with some of the Georgia players yesterday, saying, well, how do you match up against so-and-so? He says, oh, is he starting? Because I heard he was hurt. And uh, a lot of, lot of uh, injuries on LSU. They're banged up pretty bad. Second down and four. LSU with a solid drive here in the first quarter. Just over four minutes remaining. Neely. Scraps his way down to about the 15. Witherspoon on the stop. That time, actually, his own lineman got in front of him. I thought that might have been Jason Underwood, who was trying to lead the play. And Mealy so quick into the hole, looking for that little slice. He just uh, bumped into his own lineman. 
LSU now into that Georgia red zone. Last week they got into the Auburn red zone five times, only managed one score. Very disappointing for Jerry Donardo. Thought his offense could have gotten more points out of that. Well, I think Donardo's in what they call four down territory here. Third and three. It's Mealy, and he stopped at the 20. He lost a couple. Boy, that was just a great collapse on the outside. David Jacobs, 99 on the outside, has got the containment, and he just crushes it down. Top of your screen, you're going to see him come off the line right here. Look at Mealy. Right there, he has to make a direction change. You see the tackle underneath. And, of course, Marcus Stroud, 97 in there. Again, look at this. Drive him off the ball. Look at that arm strength. Wow, that's what you want in a defensive lineman. Keep that separation. 37-yard field goal attempt by John Corbello is up. And it is good. LSU gets on the board, and they answered Georgia's field goal just minutes ago, and we are tied at three. Boy, what a motion by Jerry DiNardo. He had to come away with some points. Look at him there. Look him talking to everybody. LSU needed to score early. They've done so, and we're tied at three. 2.49 to go in the first quarter. Bad news for LSU, or at least it looks bad, as Brandon Whiney leaves the field, headed for that LSU locker room. Let's check in with Greg Bowser. They're going to check why he's growing. They said he's got a pull growing, and uh, they're going to take him in, check it, and tape him, and hope they can get him back. Tough injury for Brandon Whiney. LSU, though, gets on the board. The 37-yard field goal from John Corbello. Longest of the year. He's now 2 of 4 in that department. And LSU will kick off, and Danny Boyd will have the honors for the Tigers. Well, Thanks. LSU has got to be happy with that drive because they sustained a drive, got some first downs, and got some points. Deep in the end zone, Tim Wansley takes a knee, and Georgia will take over at the 20. Well, your source for sports on the internet, it's got to be jpsports.com. It's now online with a great new look and many new features. Each week, we'll bring you previews of our upcoming telecast and in-depth coverage of the SEC. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. And it's my understanding, Dave, uh -huh. that you can actually see this game later on that's tonight right. in, in real time. Like yeah, in its entirety. If that's a word, entirety. Sure, it is for our purposes. <laughs> Quincy Carter, 40% completion here as we are winding down the first quarter. 41 to go. Game's about seven. Oh, good blocks up front. The center and Breedlove, the guard, just driving them off the ball and getting that little split. When you get that split, you can see it right there. Left guard, I mean, excuse me, right guard. There's the kick out right in there. You see bang right in there. Look at Sanks running full speed all the way into the hole. That's what you want. That's why they picked up nine and a half yards. You know, we mentioned it earlier, Sanks and Lewis, two guys that came out at the same time, Jamal Lewis, that is, of Tennessee. And Sink says about the only guy he keeps up with in this league is Jamal. First down carry for Mr. Sinks for Georgia. But he says, you know, I mean, I, in the back of my mind, those two came out, and it's almost like a competition, a friendly competition between those two players. So much was expected of them. And while Jasper had to go to uh, – he couldn't qualify academically. Yes. had to sit out that first year, went to a prep school, uh, what would have been his freshman year. Jamal got all of attention based on his performance at Tennessee, which was a great year. Absolutely, but Sykes has got tremendous speed into the hole. A lot different runner than uh, Jamal Lewis. He's more of a shifty type runner, whereas Jamal was more of a power, forced it up in there. Well, that shifty move from Jasper Sykes didn't get him a lot on that carry. Charles Smith on the stop for LSU. Sykes now with seven carries for 37 yards. Now look at the eyes there. That's Smith sliding along the line. That's exactly what he has to do. Slide, 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 step up in there, make the tackle, and hold on. But you know, that eyes, that concentration, I remember, you know, looking at those eyes of the offensive players. That's what you want. You want that intenseness. Remember Mike Singletary? Oh, yeah. Oh, he'd look right through you. Second down to nine with three wide receivers. Boy, a lot of time. Edwards had it, bobbled it, dropped it. Boy, he had it a second time. I almost thought he came up with it there. You cannot catch the ball off your chest. You got to catch it in your hands. That has been one of the real problems that Georgia has, is with their wide receivers, is dropping footballs. Look at the time that Carter has. Sit back here. Sit back here. Now throw a strike. Look at this. Off the hand. See, it bounces right off his chest. Now he's got it. 
and he dropped it again. But uh, you got to catch the ball away from your body, not against, not up into those pads. Boy, and I was surrounded by some great receivers, Fred Politnikoff, those type, Casper and Branch, and golly, they were tremendous to catch that football, had great soft hands. Georgia 0 for 3 in third down. The flags are down in the middle of the field. There was two seconds on the play clock when they snapped it, so that won't be the problem. I think LSU is jumping the snap count, but I don't Ball know. Before the snap. Yeah, Ball that's what start. they're doing. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Now what LSU is doing is they're jumping on the snap count, and Georgia knows the snap count, too, and they're anticipating the snap count, so they're rocking out of their stands. You've got to change up that snap count. Give them that hard deuce and come on the third hut. That stops that lineman from guessing. Well, last week, Georgia was 6 of 12 on third down conversions against Central Florida in a game that they felt fortunate to get out with a victory. Today, they're 0 for 3 on third downs, and they're staring at a third and 14 with five receivers, and here come the blitz. Carter slips out under pressure. Nowhere to go. Oh, I thought he fumbled. He dropped the football. Did he fumble the football? LSU players and fans say absolutely. Well, he thought about throwing the football as he was going down. And I don't know if that, and when he pulled the ball back, if it didn't come loose. Brady James of LSU has the football. Well, the ball definitely came out. Now, was his knee down before? He thought about throwing the football on the way down to try and save the yardage. Did he fumble the football? Oh, would that be a huge break for LSU? And they've got it. It'll be first and 10 at the Georgia 16, and Quincy Carter can't believe the call. Well, I think Carter, look, you see Carter right, now watch right here. Flushes out, strong side, coming out here. Now he's got a great rush there. Brady James, number 11's got him. Watch right here, he tries to throw it. See, he almost looks like he's gonna throw. Oh, that's okay. definitely out, that yep. fumbled all the way. Great call. Yep, right there, that ball's, yeah, that ball's fumbled all the way. No doubt about it. Excellent call. And Brady James, who made the tackle, received, also gets the fumble. Look at him right there. Great replays out of the truck. It is first and 10 from the 15. Josh Booty in great position inside the red zone. They hand it off to Mealy. Bounces off the outside. Gets about eight on the carry. What a run by Rondell Mealy. Well, I said if the LSU is going to be a factor in this football game, Rondell Mealy's got to take control of it. And you saw right there, you talk about effort. He was hit on the line of scrimmage. He either broke or there were three missed tackles on the play. Strong side play, follow the guard, blocking back. There's one, there's two tackles, there's three, there's four. It takes a bunch of them. Will Witherspoon finally comes in and makes the stop. And Will popped him right on the jaw, but an injured Georgia player can't get that name. Earl Chambers, the senior safety out of College Park, Georgia, is down on the ground for Georgia. Well, Bierra usually backs him up unless they do a little flip-flop with their secondary. They got so many guys in their secondary that can play. Who knows what yeah. kind of combination they'll throw out there. Well, a lot of strength, but this is really time for Georgia to come up and make a move. You know, you talk about changes in momentum in a football game. If your defense can come up and stop them, then you get tremendous enthusiasm on your offense. If LSU is able to go in and get a score, I can tell you LSU is going to stay in this football game a lot, <laughs> a long time. That Georgia defense considered about as athletic as you will find in this conference. But they have given up quite a few yards here in 1999, causing some concern. Now there's Chambers, 29. See if somebody, oh, they fell on the back of his leg. That's what the, that's what the call was. Now he got up and walked off, so he's pretty much okay. You see him trying to shake it off? There's Kevin Ramsey, the defensive coordinator and secondary coach here at Georgia. It is second and four, ball rest on the nine. Mealy slides out of that tackle. Touchdown, LSU. Rondell Mealy, what a run. How in the world did he get out of the backfield? Seymour had him in the backfield. I mean, he had him two yards deep. Rondell Mealy just runs through tackles. You know, he talk about missed tackles. He makes missed tackles. That is taking advantage of an opportunity. And Jerry DiNardo... Very pleased with a 10 to 3 lead with 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. John Corbello with the point after, but Rondell Mealy has been the story, at least on that drive. 
Remember, folks, she had a dismal game. 12 carries, 23 yards two weeks ago against Auburn. Well, what a run right here. Sidestep and then go right back up in there. And you're going to see he's in a cloud right in there of blockers. And then he's just going to break out, breaks through the tackle there. Great leg strength now. Just cut back inside. Touchdown, Rondell Mealy. And this is going to be, I mean, this is going to quiet this Georgia crowd. Again, watch this. He's in the backfield. He's going to be tackled. Seymour's got him, right? No, he doesn't. And a good cut back there against Larry Mann, number one. He cuts back underneath him. Here's a guy that got injured early in that Auburn game, played with a bad hip, but he's also playing with a bad knee. You know, there was a chance yeah. that he could have had surgery before the season and would have missed this season, but he wanted to play his senior campaign at LSU. And I think LSU fans and teammates are happy that he Probably. decided to stick around. Or... Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great run. Quincy Carter fumbled on a third down, and LSU picks it up at the 15, and it took him two plays in 15 seconds to put it in the end zone. Danny Boyd to kick off once again. Two touchbacks on his two previous kickoffs. Did that ball travel out of bounds? No. Yeah, yes, yeah, it I'm did. I'm sorry, yes. I meant, to, I meant to say it didn't make the end zone. You're right. So what Georgia efforts? gets a good break, and they'll move it out to the 35, and that's enough to make... Uh, Coach is very upset. Yeah. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Receiving team has an option. Not many people exercise that option to kick over or take it out to 35. I think you just take it at 35. I mean, that's spotting you first down and then some, you know. <laughs> that's it's, right. And Boyd's had back to back touchbacks. Quincy Carter sacked moments ago on that fumble. Georgia has only given up one previous sack this season, and it wasn't even on Quincy Carter. No, it wasn't. It was on uh, LeBron Mitchell, the uh, backup quarterback who was running a quarterback. They said it was a quarterback draw. Carter under pressure. Gosh, he makes people miss. Steps out of bounds. Picked up probably a couple of yards out of that, but LSU is getting some serious pressure on Quincy. Georgia goes with uh, no backs. So they put that back in motion and leaves Quincy all alone in the backfield, and LSU has been taking advantage of it. Well, Jarvis Green, 59, has got him right there, right? Oops, he goes down. Now watch Thomas Dunson. He's going to come up. Oops, he makes a miss. He just makes players miss. But this is a little, a little tap right there at the end. Again, watch that hit. Oh, that was a pretty good little shot. But this is prime time for Quincy Carter. He needs to get in there, take control of this offense, take control and, and get his team downfield, get him in position to score. He needs to take that momentum back. Three wide receivers. Carter steps up, tries to throw a bullet across the middle. That was Javaris Johnson. And it is third down again for Georgia. Oh, and and Georgia's had their problems third down, Dave. Let's go down and... Uh, Check in on Earl Cham Chambers with Greg Bowser. Well, Dave, Earl Chambers uh, looks like someone stepped on his right foot. They're retaping his foot that he should be back in the game. Georgia will need him back. One thing that LSU is doing in this defense that uh, Lou Temper has is they're bringing the backside, and that seems to be Jeremy Lawrence. He's outside rush, number 32. He keeps on coming real hard, and it's kind of disrupting the flow. Carter goes up top. Georgia is now for five and third down opportunities. Jermaine Phillips was the intended receiver and Georgia just basically not in sync. Well, I think this is the thing that Jim Donnan was saying to us. He said, I just want to be honest with you. We are not the kind of football team where we're ranked high. We've got a good football team. We've got great players, but we're just not playing to our ability. And that is really frustrating to a coach because you want players, you know, sometimes you've got, you've got your good first line players and then you've got your backups that are just so-so players, but he's got depth at every position. We talked yesterday with their coaching staff, and I think it's real frustrating for Jim Donnan. Win cop to punt it away. It's a nice high spiral. You hear the horn to end the first quarter. Fair catch. Dropped by Dominic Davis, but I think he fell on it. A punt of 41 yards, and LSU will take over at about the 22 yard line. Quincy Carter, a sluggish first quarter. His Georgia Bulldogs trail LSU. 10 to 3. Back in a moment. Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. It is a great afternoon for football. Temperatures in the low 70s. And there are our first quarter stats. As you can see, 
pretty equal. Yeah, they really are equal. The only thing is, of course, possession, where you get the football. Well, as you were, <laughs> we were discussing about turnovers mean so much in this game. Georgia had a big turnover that led to the touchdown by Rondell Mealy. Sure did, and it really cost them. That's, you cannot give the football to a good football team down in your own territory. Mealy stuff loses about three on that. I can tell you that uh, Mealy is going to get a lot of attention right now because he has kind of embarrassed Georgia with that first score. He ran through three tackles. Francis Grant, who was a Butkus Award candidate. Look at the red shirts around him. He's going to gather a lot of attention today. Look at right. Grant getting up. That's what they want out of Grant. They want that leadership. You know, they want him, they want him to get out there and spark this defense. And they haven't really had that. There's so much talent defensively. They're kind of waiting for somebody to step up and take control. Here he steps up in the pocket, side arms it. His intended receiver was Darrell Myers. And it falls incomplete. Well, this is a big down right now for Booty because you're third down, you're third down about 14 yards. You don't want to force the football, but if you're Georgia, it's a big down for you because if you stop them, you're going to get the ball near midfield. Third down and 13. Now it's time for Stroud and Seymour to step up. That interior defensive line getting pressure on the quarterback. LSU, two of four on third downs today. Grant pumping up the defense for Georgia. Crowd getting louder. Georgia fake the blitz. Pressure coming. Booty unloads it. Myers oh. dropped it. Oh, wow. He was well short of the first down, but nonetheless, it hit him right in the numbers. I don't care where he was. He dropped the football. Good pressure, quarterback pressure there by 94. Bruce Arian. But again, Booty has time to look downfield. You just cannot drop the football. Myers has got to come up with this. There's the pressure. And again, Myers, you just got to catch that football. That's right there. Roy Robertson on the coverage for Georgia. Patrick Pass calls for the fair catch at the 42 and corrals it, hauls it in, and that's where Georgia will take over. You call the day. Big third down stop by the Bulldogs. Results in good field position. A punt of 38 yards, and Quincy Carter needs to get this offense untracked. Well, you look at Quincy Carter and you think about pressure. He eliminates pressure, but what they're doing, what LSU is doing, is bringing that backside containment. We've seen a lot of number 32, Jeremy Lawrence, coming in there on that backside, trying to make him step up quicker. And LSU has taken away that shorter passing game, giving them the long routes, and Carter has not been effective on the long pass battle. Flags down. Looks like movement against Georgia. Boy, and if Jim, that's against Georgia, I can tell you Jim Donnan's going to be, he's going to be grinding his teeth. Ball before the snap, ball start, right guard, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Georgia last week, Dave, penalized 13 times. Georgia's been penalized 27 times already this season. That sticks in the crawl of that man, yes, it does. Jim Donnan. Georgia first and 15 now. Three wide receivers in the game. Out to Sinks. Gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. Lionel Thomas on the initial stop for LSU. Boy, and Thomas played that well. 28 slid out there. He got him. He got a block by a wide receiver. He played through the block and made the tackle and brought him up short. So that's exactly what you want to do from that outside position. This defense is playing well for LSU and Lou Tepper. I'm sorry. They, I was just going to say, Dave, they are really responding. They've, uh, they were embarrassed by Auburn. I mean, that's an embarrassment what happened to them. Well, Thomas making his first or made his first start last week against Auburn and stepped up with seven tackles and has held on to that starting spot here today. Second and ten. The pitch to pass. He's on the outside to the 30. Inside the 20. Touchdown, Patrick Pass and the Georgia Bulldogs. A 58-yard run. I can tell you that 80 
86,000 saw it, but watch number 17 get crushed under the pile. Great block there by the up back coming on the play. And then Patrick Pass comes out there. That's Sanks who got that, just that smother block. But Quincy Carter got buried in there. It's a down the line, and they made him toss it quick. And he never saw the tail end of it. Matt Hines with the point after. It's up and good, and that ties our score at 10. Patrick Pass had only carried the football nine times coming into this game for 14 yards. On one touch today, he goes 58 and scores a touchdown. Patrick Pass with a 58-yard touchdown run ties the football game at 10 apiece with 13.05 to play before halftime. Boy, now that excited the crowd. That got him into this football game. Jerry DiNardo didn't like it. Jerry has been taking some heat in Baton Rouge. And he has handled it quite well, I would say. Yes, he has. He's focused on what their goal is. He's not going to let his focus get blurred by just one game prepared preparations. Kerouac. It's a line drive taken by Dominic Davis at the goal line. Oh, he's got some blockers. Davis tripped up and gets it to the 20. Tried to get outside, couldn't do it. Stopped by Terrell Vieira. Well, Rondell Mealy has to be a key for this LSU offense, especially with Josh Moody making his first start. He certainly does. Look at this. We talked about him running through tackles. This is just vintage Rondell Mealy. Look at the pop he has. Comes in here, he makes people miss, and then he just runs through tackles, pushes them out of the way, and scored that touchdown. That really set the tone because he makes a great cut. There he was jumped in the backfield, and on this touchdown run, this really gave LSU life. One of the best runs we have seen this year. Dominic Davis in at running back. Moody. Jarrell Myers was coming inside to block, but Booty was looking right at his number. I know. I thought I think that was a mix-up between Myers and uh, and Booty. Rondell Mealy getting a little bit of earned rest, perhaps. Well, yeah, I didn't think it'd be very long before no. we saw Rond Rondell back on the football field. You see him looking at that arm tag. That's the change. As they send in several players, signal that play from the sideline that Greg Bowser told us about. You see him look at his hand pad, see what it is. Mealy back in a tailback. He's seven yards deep. Moody rolls to the near side. Jamie Henderson picks it off for the Bulldogs. This is a bullet. It's thrown right at Reggie Robinson. It's going to bounce up probably 10, 15 feet in the air. You just don't want to tip this football right there. Bang. He just pops the ball in the air. Good concentration. Close on the football. And again, look at that. You just can't. Boy, this is going to be this is going to be a mark. Had to make the 30-yard line. They're moving the sticks. <laughs> well, then he made the 30-yard line. Yep, the ball sitting right on top of the 30-yard line. He didn't make it by much. Woo. Again, you, you look for that surge. You can see LSU just trying to grind it out in the middle. Josh Booty just getting down there grinding. That's big man on big man. Look at him. Ooh. <laughs> First and ten from the 30. The reverse to Myers. That reverse loses about 13 yards. Bruce Adron makes the stop. The sophomore linebacker out of Atlanta, Georgia. Well, in every play, you have positions where you have containment responsibility. It's a double reverse. And again, you see the backside containment is right there. That's exactly what you want. You want that backside containment. Don't allow them. Josh Booty can't allow him to sit back there. His second down and 12. Rob Sale comes into the game, a freshman offensive guard. Booty gets it away and gets it away to Robert Royal. Warren, he had Marcus Stroud right in his nose. I'm talking about looking right up the nostrils. Stroud, number 97, gets a great swim move. I mean, he's right in Booty's face. Look at this. Good swim to the outside. There's 97. Wow. That's getting rid of the football quick. I'll tell you, Dave, Josh Booty 
is calm and he's poised so far in this football game. I know we haven't played a full half yet, but he has been impressive yes. in my opinion. Oh, I think so too. Third and four from the 19. The Georgia crowd making some noise. Booty to the outside. Royal couldn't hold on to it. Booty had to get rid of it in a hurry and maybe Royal wasn't quite ready for it. Seymour putting the pressure on Booty. Now Booty under pressure again, looks downfield, finds his receiver. Seymour that time, I'll tell you, the Georgia comes off that line. They love coming off that line, love getting in the quarterback's face. 36 yard field goal attempt by John Corbello. He's made from 37 already today. It's a fake. Flags are down. Pass is incomplete. Tommy Banks was the intended receiver. Now what's the flag? Oh, if it's if it's a five-yard offside by Georgia. Oh my goodness. Oh. That will give LSU a first down. Oh wow. And that's the thing that Jim Donnan said last week. They had three third downs where they had penalties and kept drives alive. Look at Jim Donnan's face. He's looking up here. He... Now it has to be lined up in the neutral zone. Let's hear what the call is, but uh, the result is it. Outside on a defense. Five yard penalty. Previous one. Results in a first down. Oh, boy. Kevin Ramsey, the defensive coordinator, just shakes his head. And well, now I know why Jim Donovan was so frustrated. Yeah, well, and that's a perfect example of a third down. They try a fake play. They don't get it. You stop them, and then you give them first down and see if Josh Booty doesn't make them pay. They're at the 14. It's first and 10. Mealy powers his way inside the 10. Picks up about five. Robinson on the stop for Georgia. Man, oh, man. If you're a Georgia fan, you've got to be saying... Let's not do that. Let's go down to Greg Bowser. Well, Dave, I'll tell you, Compton's on the bench there uh, looking at his right ankle, and they may have to take him off to the locker room. It looks pretty serious, but uh, we'll have more in just a second. That line getting thinner and thinner for Jerry DiNardo. Second down and five. Nearly thrown for a loss by Marcus Stroud. Well, if you don't block the onside tackle, Stroud comes off the ball so fast. What they did that time is they pulled the guard and tried not to block Stroud. Rob Sale, the offensive guard, pulls out the lead to play. And they're not going to block Stroud. See if Sale, 73, pull out there for the block. You can see Stroud in the backfield making the tackle for about a four-yard loss. Now that's some enthusiasm. That's the emotion that the, this Georgia team wants to see. When you hear this third down, you'll know whether it's good or bad. Third and ten. Bobble snap. Booty to the corner of the end zone. It's incomplete. Well, that was a dangerous throw by Josh Booty. He's flowing against his body. He's throwing right-handed, flowing left. He's got no real zing on the football, and he throws it to a spot. Again, this is the route. It's just an out and across. You see it going deep there, but that ball just sails there. Now let's see if they really try a field goal. This time it's from 31. They've moved up five yards. Corey Gibbs is the holder. Corbello's kick Perfect. is right down the heart. And we are tied once again. It has been a seesaw affair. And Jerry DiNardo very happy with his football team with 2.25 to go in the second quarter. The LSU Tigers have met the challenge. They're tied with the 10th ranked team in the country. Come back. Second quarter action, 225 to play before halftime. We're tied at 13. LSU on a second and 23. Get a 58-yard pass completion to Gerald Miles. Myers. That set up a field goal by John Corbello. Danny Boyd to kick off. Oh, wow. Well, into the end zone. 
Well, Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the SEC Good Works team, recognizing superior community service efforts. Today's honoree is junior running back Brett Milliken of the University of Georgia. Brett gives a great deal of his time as a mentor to youth in the Athens area, frequently visiting local schools to participate in various reading programs. He's also a volunteer at the Athens Homeless Shelter. Jefferson Pilot Sports is proud to salute Brett Milliken for being named a member of the SEC Good Works team. Brett, a little banged up, however, had a bad ankle. A junior out of Lilburn, Georgia. Well, you know, you talk about a series, whether momentum is going to swing, which way it is. Tied score. Now, right now, if LSU can stop Georgia on this series, they will have the momentum going in. If Georgia drives the football, and that's what Quincy Carter and company want to do, if they drive the football and they get a score, then they go in with the momentum. That's a huge factor at halftime. The Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes is here. You and a friend could win an all-expense-paid trip to four college football bowl games in five days, including the... He has a fractured tibula. Uh, they're going to check it out. Brandon Wiley, he went in. He, will, he probably will not be back because of the groin injury. Numbers are decreasing at a rapid rate. Already, Trey Langley is out with a bad shoulder. Compton came in with a bad ankle. Now he's got the fibula problem, perhaps. Brandon Whiney in the locker room. Looks like LSU will perhaps be running the left side of the line the rest of the afternoon. Carter under pressure again. His intended receiver was Johnson, quarterback. Well, it's not that big a play, but what they I think they ruled it incomplete. Yeah, it didn't really no, matter. It did, no, they ruled really the completion for about probably about a half a yard gain. But they need to go downfield. Quincy Carter needs to get a drive here. He needs to take that momentum back. But that backside pressure, that time 59, Jarvis Green, every time Carter has been flushed out of that pocket or come out on that bootleg action, he's seen someone in his face. He's had Lawrence from one side. He's had uh, just three times he's been just terribly pressured. Second down and nine the 21. Quarterback draw gets about two, maybe three yards on the play before he's brought down. And that'll bring up another third down situation. Well, Dave, if you're if you're Jerry Donardo, you turn around and say, hey, we got three timeouts. Why not use one? And the, well, they have two timeouts. Why not use one? They've got him in third down and about eight yards. Look at Donardo. He's saying, now if he doesn't make it this time, we may call timeout. You want it right there, coach? <laughs> There's 13 on the play clock, and Quincy has yet to call the play. We're down to 10 seconds. Georgia's going to have to take a timeout. Time it took Georgia a long time to get that play in. And it's probably not a bad thing with 120 to take the timeout. Let's get this thing right. Well, you don't want to take the you don't want to take the penalty, but uh, they're trying to run the clock out too. Third down in this situation, third and nine. It's a long thing to make. For one thing, you don't want to do if your Carter has forced the ball into trouble. Don't make a mistake. LSU and Georgia now with two timeouts remaining apiece. Next Saturday, our Bell South SEC Game of the Week, Mississippi State at Auburn. The Bulldogs defense and special teams were the difference in last year's win against the Tigers. Kenzaki Jones and Eugene Clinton combined for a 31-yard fumble return for a touchdown, and Robert Bean blocked an Auburn punt and ran 23 yards for the score as State won 38-21 in Starkville. Be sure to check your local listings for the Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your town next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Robert Bean with an interception and a block punt in that game. And from one Bulldog to a next. Yeah, there's a Bulldog. That's Hugga. He guards the end zone. We have a sign, Dog Pound, up there. I bet that's a, that's a pretty frequented sign. We got Ugga six now here in Athens. Ugga five retired with arthritis. <laughs> brought in Ugga six earlier this year. <laughs> Third down. Georgia just one of seven. Carter pressure from the backside. Unloads. Pass incomplete. Georgia will have to punt it away. Michael Greer, the intended receiver. Fred Booker on the coverage for LSU. And that stops the clock 
and LSU has a chance for good field position. Well, that backside rush again, that time Jeremy Lawrence, number 32, just pouring down the backside. Quincy Carter had, doesn't have time from that backside, even look downfield. He's rushing to his left. It's, it's thrown into the, right into the flat, stops the clock. So LSU, they've got, uh, they have two timeouts. They're going to get the ball, should get the ball around their own 40-yard line. Now, if I'm LSU and I get that football, I got this kind of time, I go for broke. I try to get a field goal at least. Davis lets it go. Oh, look at the bounce. And fortunate bounce oh. for LSU. That ball was a spiral, and you never know. If that nose starts coming a different direction, that ball could have spun and really pinned LSU down. It was a 28-yard punt. It's probably about a 38-yard punt and a 10-yard roll backwards. But look at the field position that LSU is going to have with a minute and four seconds and two timeouts. Now, if you're Jerry DiNardo, don't sit on the football. Go downfield. Look downfield. Try to find, let Josh Booty find one of those crossing patterns that he's been successful. Maybe find Myers on a little drag across the middle. But he's got some weapons. First and ten, ball near the midfield strike. If LSU could put some points on the board before halftime, it would give this team a huge hit. Booty overthrows his wide receiver, looking for Ed Dangerfield. That'll stop the clock with 58 seconds to play before halftime. Now, what Booty needs to do in this situation is realize he doesn't need 50 yards. He needs about 25 to 30 yards to get downfield, get in that field gold range. Remember, Dave, Booty just getting loose now. He threw yeah. 58 passes last week. He's <laughs> only thrown 16 today. That's kind of like a <laughs> bad quarter for him. <laughs> He's seven of seven yards and one INT. Shotgun for Booty. Stands in the pocket. Throws to the outside. Jarrell Myers. Boy, great concentration. Just great concentration, Dave. That ball is thrown to defenders right on his tail. He's going out of bounds. Harris is right on him, number 13. And watch this. It's going to be an out. He's going to curl out right here. Now, look where the ball is thrown. Great concentration. Get that foot down in bounds. Again, look at that concentration. Get that foot down. You see how he collapses those legs? Make sure that you have one leg in bounds, one foot. But now they're in field goal range. Myers had 13 catches last week, two weeks ago, against Auburn. Freshman record for the Tigers. Myers again. He gets about seven. Now, call timeout. You got the timeouts. Call them. You got to use them. You got two of them. They don't use one. Look at the, look at the seconds that they're losing right here. They've lost 10 seconds since the pass was completed. Oh, they now, finally call a timeout. Oh, come on, Josh Booty. You got to call a timeout quicker. You don't run 15 seconds off the clock. They just lost 15 seconds. That could be as many as two plays. Absolutely. Nice play right here. It's underneath throw. Looking for Myers, finds him. Now, pick up those big linemen, look downfield. You see him down there. That's uh, Al Jackson, 71, getting a block down there. But you call timeout right then, because you've got two timeouts. You only have 30-some seconds. You want to stop the ball after that, you throw it down on the ground. 31 ticks left. It'll be second and two from the 23. They're in field goal position. I think any points at this, at this juncture will oh. give this LSU team a huge lift. Well, and I think Jim Donnan on his side of the ball is going to go in and say, we are making the same mistakes that we made last week. On third downs, they're, they're really hurting themselves. They're not converting third downs. Don't forget, you can log on to jpsports.com for the latest information. You can get up-to-date stats. You can also read Dave Rose column which I think mentioned me this week. Yeah, yes I did mention you I certainly did you trying to take credit for those back-to-back -back <laughs> overtime games I couldn't believe that you're the new kid on the block <laughs> well you got to attribute it to something that might as well beat me nine of 18 for 147 yards for Josh Booty his first collegiate start see if he again looks for Myers pressure Booty goes toward the end zone at about the four-yard line at Dangerfield. Tried to make a spectacular catch. Pass just came up a little bit short. Well, you know what happened to Dangerfield? His feet went out from under him. It's a curl pen right out here. You'll see him. Look, to see his feet go out from under him right there? Just can't get those feet back into reaching back there for the football. And look at Josh Booty. Ah. Twenty-five seconds. Third and two. 
Ball at the 24, three wide outs in the game. Booty in the shotgun again. Georgia brings the heat. Booty steps up. Nearly picked off. It looked like Corey Robinson read a, ran a better route than Ed Dangerfield. Yeah. Well, he was going back to Dangerfield in that corner again, and Dangerfield just got trapped on the inside. Nowhere to go. So he throws it away. But this is a huge momentum builder for LSU going in leading if they can, in fact, score on this field goal. They'll go in leading. 40 yard field goal. Corbello perfect so far. Long today has been 37. Oh, they're off sides again. I don't believe and it. And that will give him a first oh, down. Oh. Dustin Lucky, the, oh. the senior. You got to be kidding me. Georgia is off sides again. Oh, My brother. Goodness. Now you see where those 15 seconds really factor in. LSU. Now LSU declines it because they, they've only got 15, 16. They take the points. But again, you see with that 15 seconds, that would give them 31 seconds. You can't jump off. I'm telling you, this defense is just, they're, they're shell-shocked right now. They're, they're guessing on snap counts. You look at the football, they're doing a lot of the little things wrong. They need to regroup. They've got great talent. For Jerry DiNardo, he goes in on a plus. Take the points. He wants to be leaving at halftime. They came in here as close to 10 point underdogs today, taking on the 10th ranked team in the country, playing their fourth straight home game. I mean, going, coming in with a sophomore quarterback, making his first collegiate start. I mean, certainly it was an uphill battle from the time they arrived in Athens. And look at him going to the locker room with a three point advantage, yeah. and perhaps. You, and you know where you can really tell it? There's 86,000 people here, and we know how loud Sanford Stadium can be, and it's quiet right now. People are going back to get the hot dogs. They're, uh, they're watering down for the second half. Good terminology. Danny Boyd kicks it off, and it's a good one. It's going to break. Tim Wansley across the 25 to the 28. Boy, he had one person to beat. One person to beat. Wansley, a sophomore out of Buford, Georgia, came in heralded. One of the best defensive backs in the country. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at our SEC flashback scores of other games. And, of course, we'll break down this game in terms of our stats and highlights. It'll all be coming up at halftime in nine seconds. LSU was offside, so they will, George will make him re-kick it. And if the last return is any indication, I'd do the same thing. Yeah, I think I would too. I don't know. With uh, nine seconds now, I might squib kick it if I was LSU. Because you give that football back to Davis or one of those speedsters, and they can break it. And all you want to do if you're LSU, you just want to down it. Quincy Carter, he's saying, please, just give me another series. Give me three downs. That's, he's that kind of competitor. The crowd begins to chant Auburn. Auburn. Well, I don't know that I'd be chanting that if I'm no. going to the locker room down three. I wouldn't want to remind LSU about <laughs> Auburn because uh, they are coming out and playing inspired football today. First of all, LSU has one turnover in the first half. That was a Josh Booty interception off a deflection. The ball hit his own receiver, popped up in the air, and Jamie Henderson picked it off. Last week they had five before halftime. Well, you see the results of that, though. Remember they held them to just a field goal try, so that was a huge defensive series. Boy, another good kick. Wansley takes it five yards deep. Why not? Tries to get outside. Great coverage by LSU. Wansley can only get back to the 16. There's three seconds left to play before halftime. Lionel Thomas on the stop. Oh, if you're Quincy LSU. Carter, if you're Quincy Carter, do you air it out one time, throw it long, try to hit, get a big play, or you just take a knee, kneel down, and regroup? Hey, coach, listen, I, I think we ought to throw it long. <laughs> I said I want to go long. I want to go long. Did you hear me, coach? I said long. <laughs> well, he's quite a competitor. Quincy Carter is the heart of this football team, and he's just a sophomore. 
Jim Donovan sure talked well about him. He just marveled at his talent. Those two have gotten extremely close over the last two years. Quincy Carter will take a knee and get to the locker room. And well, this crowd not happy with what they've seen from Georgia. Two weeks ago, LSU got booed on the way to the locker room against Auburn. This week, Georgia's catching a few boos. It is 16 to 13, Georgia undefeated on the year, 1 and 0 in league play. Trying to remain unbeaten, LSU trying to get back into the SEC Western Division race. Let's check in with Greg Bowser. Coach, first half, uh, your thoughts on your offense? Well, we're playing hard uh, as Georgia is. We're just, uh, our, our routes aren't being run well enough. We're not throwing and catching the ball well enough. We need to pick up the intensity on the perimeter. The defensive, you got to be satisfied with the stop down at the end. Yeah, they played. They played hard for two weeks in a row. We just can't give up the big play. Yeah, thank you, thank Coach. You, Coach Jared Donato and his LSU Tigers, they lead this Georgia football team 16-13. We'll be back at halftime here at Athens. Today. LSU went back to LSU. Georgia recaptured it. And then right before the half, LSU had to get the momentum back. Well, they did that with a field goal and took this lead. But early on, Quincy Carter, who's only been sacked, who well, hadn't been sacked at all this year, drops the football, Dave, and that led to a score. That led to Rondell Mealy. And what a run by Rondell Mealy. Would not be denied. Broke three tackles, one in the backfield, and scored. This is what gave LSU the life. But, uh, of course, Quincy Carter with his Patrick Pass little flip right there. And then Patrick Pass, who you talked about, had not carried very many times, down the sideline for the touchdown, getting the momentum back to Georgia. And a big play by Georgia's defense. The interception takes it down to about the 19-yard line. Georgia gets a field goal. And there are halftime stats. As you can see down there the penalties for Georgia, four for 20 yards, two of them on third downs. Yeah, exactly. Those are those were the crucial ones. It's just been the the, the uh, statistics are really reflective of the kind of game we have. Neither team has really dominated. That's our Fram sure grip halftime stats from Athens, Georgia. So basically, in a nutshell, Dave, what has to happen here in the second half in terms of the Rose Rewind? <laughs> well, it's that time of the game we all look forward to. But for LSU, it's keep up the intensity. They have played with great intensity and to pressure Carter. They've got to keep getting that pressure on Quincy Carter. For Georgia, consistency. Both on offense and defense, they need consistency. They need drives. And then get the crowd back into the football game. This crowd, they've sat on their hands in the first half. Matter of fact, some boo birds came out as the Bulldogs went into the locker room. But as the dogs come back out, the cheers return as well. It is 16-13. LSU on the road, upsetting Georgia. Back in a moment. Worldwide Olympic sponsor, insurance for the unexpected, investment for the opportunity. By Pizza Hut, the best pizzas under one roof. By Amico Ultimate. Amico, you expect more from a leader, and you get it. By the new Regal GS by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. And by Sonic, America's driver. Eighty-six thousand on hand in Athens. We get set for second half kickoff. LSU leads Georgia sixteen to thirteen. Let's check in with our sideline man, Greg Bowser. Coach, uh, what are you talking about halftime? Well, you know we've done a lot of good things, but we've been our own worst nemesis, as I told you going into the game. Uh, uh, bad turnover gave them a touchdown. Uh, we've just got to execute better uh, on offense, defense. We're letting them throw the corner route on us, so we're going to try to take that away, and then. Just got to stop the silly penalties. But, uh, you know, LSU's come out and done a good job. And uh, uh, bottom line, the last thing we said, we just got to have some fun. We're playing really tight. We got to relax and just enjoy playing football. Thank you, Coach. Great point by Jim Donnan, whose team is uh, might be a little shell-shocked here today. No, especially Quincy Carter. Man. Six of 16 for 50 yards. That's certainly not the Quincy Carter we've seen. Dominic Davis. Kickoff return out over the 25. Jermaine Phillips on the stop for Georgia. There are LSU's first half possessions. The well, touchdown was a gift. Exactly. Field goal was a good drive, 10 plays. You look for those 10 and 13 yard uh, number of plays. That's that's consistency. But other than that, you're right. Touchdown was a gift. Quincy Carter fumbles on the 16th. Rondell Mealy, a couple plays later, takes it in for the touchdown on a great run. 
Josh Booty in the first half. Pretty successful, 9 of 20, 147 yards, only one interception, which really wasn't a bad throw. It hit off his own receiver. Swing it out to Neely to the 25, and he stopped right there. Jeff Harris on the stop for the Bulldogs. Rondell got off to a pretty good start. Seven carries, 26 yards, but his last six carries have resulted in minus seven yards and a fumble. Well, what happens is your you're defensive line, you're in there and you say, hey, that number seven is running through us, and everybody starts to focus and concentrate a little bit more on number seven. And the big guys up front you saw right there, Richard Seymour, 93, and 97 Stroud, they're the big ones that are concentrating on them. Booty rolls out. You see his arm strength defended on the far side of the field by Corey Robinson. Was looking for Ed Dangerfield. What a beautiful play by Robinson on that play. A little curl to the outside. You're going to see a bullet here and watch Robinson's right arm reach over there and knock the ball down. Now, a lot of people would say he was playing through, but that right arm reached over there and hit him. And you see Josh Booty saying, wait a minute, that's a flag. Nope, don't think so. LSU is going to make a wholesale change, decided to hold off against it. It's third and 11 from the 25. Booty in the shotgun again. Banks and Mealy are your running backs. Pressure from the outside. Banks picks it up. Booty stays in the pocket, throws it to the near side. It's picked off by Jeff Harris. Just a bad throw by Josh Booty. Boy, one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside, and it was just perfect coverage by Harris. Josh Booty saw the pressure from the right side. They blitzed him from his right. He goes left and he throws it right into the arms of Jeff Harris. You're going to see again right off the line right here. Now watch Harris stay right with him. Out pattern. Look at Harris. Just steps right up. He's right in front of him. Can't take that much time to throw that football on out pattern. It's got to be there earlier than that. Well, good work by Georgia secondary simply because Donnan had said that his team was getting burned on the out patterns and they were sitting on it that time. Georgia now with great field position. First and 10 from the 27 of LSU. And off to Juan Green. The true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, getting his first carry since he broke his jaw. And here's what Georgia did in the first half with their possessions. Oh, look at the number there. Three, five, two, seven. It's a long one. They got a field goal out of that three and punt and one to end the half. They have not been consistent on offense. Sustaining drives. Both coaches would love to see that happen and it just hasn't been the case today. Second down and eight. The two yard game by Green. The option Carter stopped at about the 23. That'll bring up another third down situation and we preached about it all game long about how unsuccessful George has been against this LSU defense today. Lou Tepper has had a nice scheme in place. Yes, he has. He's put pressure on Quincy Carter that Quincy Carter has not seen before. Now, here's the call. You see him right there. He makes the call to the defense, signals it in. Look if you don't see that same outside pressure that we've seen by Jeremy Lawrence and Lionel Thomas all day long. We've seen 32-28 in the backfield. Third and four. Georgia one of eight in third downs. Pressure. Throws across the field. Defended nicely by Booker. He was looking for Thad Parker. But just a long throw to make when you're running out of bounds. That'll bring up a fourth down and four, and Georgia just can't get in sync offensively. Boy, they certainly can't not. Cannot. I saw LeBlanc. I thought number 18, LeBlanc, was going to intercept this football. He's sitting back in middle field. You see the pressure there, and now Carter running out of room. He's got to throw it. And when he throws, see LeBlanc right there. He's 18. He just steps right up there, and he almost puts a hand up and gets that football. That Hines from 38. It is no good wide left. Half was two for two, but misses from 38. When you talk about, we talked about momentum. That's momentum. Jim Donnan's group, they were in great field position, but couldn't get anything out of it. They still trail by three. We'll be back to Athens after this message from Pizza Hut. LSU holding on to that three-point advantage. They dodge one there as Georgia, after the interception, 
Headed first and 10 from the 25 and got nothing out of it. And this field goal now gives it back to LSU. First and 10 from their own 20. And off Neely, and he continues to struggle and loses a couple of more yards. Well, the reason that I'm here is because of the guy standing right next to me. Uh, literally. Literally. <laughs> exactly In right. more ways than one. You want to know why I got this job? It's because of you. My, oh, my, no. My no, baby I, boy. You're your baby, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The voice is familiar. I'm telling you that. It's great to welcome you to the booth, Bob. Thank Wonderful. you, Dave. It's uh, great listening to you guys. I can't imagine Dave would give me the chance to be in the booth here. <laughs> I just knew I, I knew I looked better, so I figured, what the heck? Well, actually, if you do well in this first series, we're going to use you a lot more. <laughs> Booty throwing. That is incomplete at the third. I'm sorry, Dave. Hush, yeah, Dave. Dave, Dave, your dad's speaking. <laughs> you had well, it's your turn to talk. <laughs> Golly, this is how it was the entire time I was growing up. Exactly. In our, what do we call it? The war room. The war room. You better be good if you're going to be on our TV set. Amen. I hear your grandfather's even tougher. <laughs> That's right. The, his grandfather called Dave, by the way, I'm going to tell you this, and said, that Dave Ray sure is helping you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? Third down, 12 yards to go, LSU, and they need it. Ball rest on the 19-yard line. Josh Booty threw an interception. Just moments ago, his second of the game. Shotgun Booty has time. Nearly picked off again. Jeff Harris stepped right in front of the intended receiver, Myers, and Georgia's defense holds, and LSU will have to punt. Well, Dad, you were here in 1986, I guess, all the way through 91, doing SEC Games of the Week. Memories of the conference. Oh, yeah, I have memories of, first of all, of Georgia and uh, LSU and Curly Holman had his first game. Oh, yeah. Tim Foley and I telecast that game. And the Georgia games that I remember were because of that great, great running game Georgia had every year. A new running back who could run it off tackle. And they've yet to find that at the University of Georgia. And LSU looks like, despite all the heat on DiNardo and the problems down there, it looks like uh, that LSU may have a chance to to come back. They're playing pretty good, and they're showing today, I think, Dave, that they're a pretty good football team. Well, you know, Bob, when you embarrass a team, you know, when you get embarrassed, as they were against Auburn, LSU was, all of a sudden, they get they get a fire in their bonnet, and they're playing with that fire, and Georgia has allowed them to stay in this football game. Georgia has done a lot of things wrong in this first half. You guys talk about the SEC. That Everybody asks me, where is my favorite place to do an SEC football game? It's whichever game you're doing on any Saturday, because every place is unique. And we've had a couple of good ones the last few weeks, really the whole season. This is our fifth game. We've already had two overtime games as the LSU defense steps up once again. Defenses are ruling today. Patrick Pass stopped. Pass with a 58-yard touchdown run. His first carry of the game gave Georgia their only touchdown. And uh, there's uh, DiNardo uh, was uh, coaching the last year that I did football with Tim Foley. Uh, DiNardo was the first-year coach. At Vanderbilt, at Vanderbilt. Yeah, and he'd had, he had great success. In fact, when he went to uh, LSU, he really turned that program around that first year. But the last couple of years, they've had a lot of problems and uh, really just have not come up with their set team to come out there and just really take control. Five wide receivers in the game. Carter gets it off. It's a double pass. Devon Mitchell over the top. Nearly picked off by Fred Booker. How do you know all these names? <laughs> he's amazing. Does he study? <laughs> yes, he does. I can tell you, Dad, he's a he's a chip off the old block, let me tell you. <laughs> You've done a good job. Thank you, Dave. Well, that was also given away, as Jim Donnan told us yesterday. Watch the old double pass. Yeah. LeBron Mitchell, who's the backup quarterback <laughs> slash wide receiver now. Yeah, watch this. Out to the flat. It's a behind-the-line pass, but he really doesn't have time to throw the football. Good play there by Booker. Looking right into the ball, going right back there, and he's think he's not excited. Look at Booker play across from that. That's the difference between winning and losing. Booker staying with his coverage downfield. Booker, the junior out of Hammond, Louisiana, with another big play. Georgia third and ten. It seems like we've been in a lot of third down situations, and Georgia has not converted. One of nine. Make that two of ten to the 50-yard line. Randy McMichael with the catch, covered by Clarence LeBlanc. But a first down for Georgia, a gain of 18. And that'll turn around to give your offense a little bit of push because Quincy Carter sets back in the pot. Look, no pressure on him. Looks downfield, and he throws just a perfect strike. That's a conversion of a third down. They have been, they've just been horrible on third downs. I do think strike is the appropriate word yeah. for 
either one of these quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, these are these are rocket arms. Quincy having a subpar game today. He came in completing 60% of his passes a year ago, but today is really struggling. His offense is yet to get in sync. Maybe this is the drive that does it. Saints picks up about three across midfield. That would bring up second and six yards. A, a good spot for Quincy to really unload here. Bob, you saw some of the great running backs here at Georgia during your tenure. What do you think of Jasper Sanks? I mean, just looks like he's got a lot of that quality, that straight ahead smash down, get your head in there. I think he's got NFL kind of quality. Um, I mean, it's too early to call him mm -hmm. an NFL player yet. But Georgia has always succeeded best with the between the tackle running Absolutely. backs. Absolutely. Who have the quick step in the backfield and the slashing move. You, there's not been, except for the great ones like a Herschel Walker, really outside scat backs for Georgia. And he fits the mold. He certainly does. I like him running in between tackle to tackle. He sees the scene, looks at the hole. Carter gets taken down at midfield but still finds Jasper Sinks who gets another Georgia first down and the sticks will move with 936 to go in the third quarter Boy, Carter makes a great read right here reads the back flips it out there he did that one earlier to Patrick pass that went 60 yards for a score now he finds Sinks on third down Georgia all of a sudden starting to get some consistency in that offense First down and 10 from the 40. Sanks is the single setback. Aaron Edwards to the near side. It's Sanks. Continues to pound it out. Gain of about seven. Well, that was caused by, by Herndon and Jennings up front, 73 and 75. The guard and the tackle just driving off the ball. Right here, you're going to see right there, right there, and boom, up through. Look right there. There's the hole. See how he sees that vision back through the hole there? That's exactly what you want. See that and then explode through that hole. Sanks now 13 carries for 65 yards. Georgia second and three. Another good down to work for Quincy Carter. 33-yard line. Keep up. Keep going with the girl you brought to the dance. He gets across the 30 or close to it. Thomas runs him out of bounds. Well, Dad, you've uh, spent a lot of time, 14 weeks around the SEC, you and Tim Foley on when Turner Broadcasting did these games. Your favorite coaches to deal with? My favorite coach to deal with of all time, uh, coaches at Florida State. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I know him. <laughs> it's Bobby Bowden. I have yeah. to say that because I just think so much of him. But I like some of the guys that they're obviously some of them are gone now but my favorite one to deal with and this may surprise you was Johnny Majors Johnny at Majors the University of Tennessee. Wow. boy we had a great <laughs> time dealing with Coach Majors. well it's third and one for the 29 Carter with the quarterback sneak and I think he got it and seeing that uh, four inches in a cloud of dust makes me say also that that Vince Dooley was yeah. uh, a tremendous coach to deal with. He was still coaching when Tim and I were doing the games. A classy man, yeah. uh, a man who had uh, his program in mind all the time, and I just love dealing with him a lot. Um, those are probably my uh, my top two. All right, now let's talk about quarterbacks. You look at a Quincy Carter, got every tool that you can imagine. Josh Booty coming in with that rocket arm and uh, leading his team well today. Some of your great quarterbacks during your tenure. Quincy Carter reminds me, I think he may be better than Tony Robinson. Pass gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tony Robinson out of Tallahassee just uh, started him written all over his shoulders, but uh, just couldn't avoid the trouble. Blew it in his personal life. Uh, uh, I One of my favorite games that uh, Tim and I ever telecast was Alabama at Tennessee when Tony Robinson went down and uh, the athletic director's son, Derek... Uh -oh, Dixon, oh, oh, that's Derek, the first thing Derek, to happen. First thing the mind goes. <laughs> Derek, 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 Derek. No. That's why I'm here, Derek. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, son. Dave, Dave used to do this when I was broadcasting games. Nobody knew it. <laughs> and he stepped in and led Tennessee to the victory. It was one of those great mm -hmm. moments in SEC college football. Big drop for Quincy Carter. Five wide receivers in the game. And he hits Dad Parker, the junior out of Atlanta. Gets it to about the 25-yard line, but he'll bring up another third down. And that's an interesting series there because what they do is they go from the they go from the uh, shotgun position, but he's two yards deeper. 
Well, the announcers, including Bob Neal for this game, are selected and compensated. Compensated? Compensated. Well, you will. Yeah, I'll get you later. Right? <laughs> you get half of what Dave gave you. <laughs> This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and JP Sports is prohibited. Compensated. This is a great day for me. <laughs> That'll get you about 50 cents and a cup of coffee on the way out of That's here. That's right. Come on, I got you a press pass. Yes. Third and six. Carton finds Michael Greer down to the 14 yard line. A healthy Michael Greer is what Georgia needs. And I looked at Quincy Carter that time, and you talk about throwing a rope. Boy, he delivered a rope. I mean, that's determination. He hasn't had a great day, not in Quincy Carter statistics, but watch this rope. This is when you zero in on him and you just drill the football to him. Bang, and he's got it. He caught it first down. And then Quincy Carter, after it, watch this. Yes, you can just see him just come up with a little bit of bounce. You see those, those hands just kind of going, mm, yeah. Well, Quincy, Dave, 9 of 20 for 86 yards today. Not a Quincy Carter type afternoon, but he's driven the Bulldogs down to the 13. Pass down to the 12. Picks up a yard. Stop made by Trev Falk out of Lafayette, Louisiana. His third stop of the afternoon. Well, that time Georgia got caught their backside guard, Steve Herndon, just didn't get out and pull in front of the play. He got tripped up by a little bit of penetration, and that just messed up the entire play. They're doing a lot better. Georgia does a lot better when they hand that ball deep off the sinks, and he finds that little seam and just darts through it. You know, Dave and I are fortunate in the fact that you got out before the expansion came in. So now with the two bonus teams, it's hard for us not to get a great game every Saturday. That's a fact, and don't think I'm not sorry about <laughs> yeah, that. I just thought I'd bring that up. You've had great How about back-to-back -back overtime? Patrick Pass takes it to the five-yard line, maybe the four. That'll bring up third down and very short for Georgia. Well, that's the kind of play that I like out of Georgia's offense, especially with Sykes. You're going to see right in here, Patrick Pass, just find that little seam. Again, running behind Jennings, Herndon, 73, 75. Again, see that little seam right there? Boom, that's what he sees. Again, run through tackles. You know, don't get cute down here. Just smash mouth, come off the football, drive it in there. That's what Georgia needs. This is this down and two. Sinks. Stop at the five. I don't think he got uh, it, Dave. I don't think so either. He had to go to about the four yard line. And he barely got back to the five yard line. Now for Jim Donnan, do you go for it? He's, boy, and that's a oh. tough decision. Look at him. He's gonna go for it, I think. Well, again, they get they get just they're running to the right time this time. I just think you go to that left because you've had so much success with it. And again, when you have to change that much direction in that backfield, you got penetration. They got to call timeout, don't they? Yeah, there's only eight yeah. seconds on the play clock. Quincy Carter is going to have to call a timeout. Jim Donnan will think about it. A big, big down for Georgia. Fourth and two. The ball rests on the five. The dogs trail the Tigers by three. It's time for another Piccadilly People profile. Meet Jim. Georgia has had nine touchdown drives of 60 or more yards this year. They're about to close in on another one. Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator, trying to find out and find a way to stop Georgia. Fourth and two from the five. Well, they take away my play because they go shotgun. I was thinking Sanks off that left side, but Quincy Carter time. Going to throw it. Incomplete flag down at about the 11-yard line. Now, from where that flag was thrown, you almost always think of offensive holding. And it is. The intended receiver was Javaris Johnson, the junior out of Anniston, Alabama, but Quincy just threw it too hard. Yeah. And Johnson is fuming, number 48, as Lou Tepper is excited, but Johnson not happy about that play. Well, it's a zero in play. He finds Johnson out here in the flat. He doesn't look again. You see right there, Johnson is right down in there. Johnson stretches out. Maybe Johnson thought he was held. Johnson probably should have had that. Yeah. Thomas Dunson on the coverage there for LSU. So the Tigers dodge one, and they lead by three. But the ball rests at the five-yard line. And remember, Booney making his first collegiate start, beginning to hear it from the Georgia faithful. From his end zone, Booney goes up top, looking for Myers. Oh. Nearly picked off. Jeff Harris 
the senior out of Jacksonville had a good read on it. I want to tell you, Harris is playing as well one on one as you can play. It's a straight go pattern. Look at Harris. Turn, keep the inside, keeps looking at his receiver. Now, keep that inside position, play the football. You just don't play coverage any better than that, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave, you're doing the game. <laughs> Dave, you just reminded <laughs> me of the old, of, of Tim Foley would always say on those defensive play, being the defensive back. Uh -huh. Get your head around, son. Get your head around, son. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Georgia wasted a 16 play drive. LSU facing a second and 10. Big to make the play. Booty unloads just in time. Is it oh. caught? No. Falls incomplete at the 24-yard line. Reggie Robinson, the intended receiver. Quarterback was pressured by David Jacobs, the freshman in. Yeah, Jacobs keeps that outside pressure. He's on the outside. Comes around right there. David Jacobs, you see him right there in his face. And Booty just jumps up. He's got nothing on the ball. Never a bigger down in Georgia today than this third down. If they can hold him here, they'll get the ball at midfield. LSU, two of ten on third down opportunities today. The ball sits on their own five. This could be a big play in this football game. Perhaps the biggest. And for Georgia, they're saying don't make a foolish penalty. Grant leading the charges. Georgia a little bit unorganized. The handoff to Neely. It's a draw play. LSU just being saved. Didn't want to turn it over, and it gets to the 10-yard line. Yeah, they just they just wanted to get punting room. Hey, let me tell you something interesting, Bob. I do have to tell you this. Our spotter spotted for you. He told me he was 12 years old, Kim Anderson. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, there are child labor laws. I mean, how do you get a 12-year-old spotter? It was 1971. Well, he's the best I could do at the time, and he's the oh. only one I could, And as Dave knows now, he's the only one we could afford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's one of the best there is. Oh, you bet. You bet. I think he is the best. Gibbs punt gets a great roll. Pass lets it go, and it rolls, and it rolls, and it oh. rolls to the 31-yard line. That's where Georgia will take over a 59-yard punt. Well, that it oh, certainly was a thrill and a pleasure. I'm gone. That's well, I, it. I think I this gotta... is the end of it. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. It was the best in the business right here. Bob Neal, thanks for joining us. Amen. We will come back to Athens after a word from your local stations. If you could draw up a better day to play football in the south, temperatures right around 70 degrees, a packed house in Athens, Georgia. This rivalry dates back to 1928, but these teams haven't played a great deal. This is just the 23rd meeting between these schools. Carter under pressure again, and he's laying down at about the 16 yard line as he got whacked by Jason Green. Well, we talked about these quarterbacks, Dave. Here's a comparison so far. A couple of veteran sophomores, if you will. Booty, 24. Yeah. Quincy about to turn 22 next week. Not a great day for Mr. Carter. Well, it's not because they're, LSU is getting that outside pressure all day long. We have seen that outside pressure coming on Quincy Carter. And he is best when he's flushed out of the pocket, uses that little roll action, fakes that handoff, uses that play pass. And they have just been down his throat. Tanya Lawrence and uh, Charles Smith and Lionel Thomas, outside backers. Carter up top, right through the hands of his tight end, Randy McMichael. McMichael was spinning, but I'll tell you this, when he looks at the tape, he'll say he should have had it. Well, and Quincy Carter knows that too, because when Quincy Carter threw the football, he watched it in the tail end of it, when he turns around, when Carter turns around there and sees it, he just looks downfield. You just see disgust on his face. And that goes right between us. I mean, you can't throw a better football than that. You've got to catch that. If you can't catch that, uh, it's going to be a long day. But Quincy Carter's somebody that doesn't allow it to affect him a whole lot. We saw Johnson leave the field. Georgia now with three wide receivers in the game. A single setback. It is third down and ten. Quick hitter to the near side. And Thad Parker. That's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Ryan Clark, Clark on the coverage. And let's see what Jim Donovan will do. It looks like he's going to punt this thing away with 2.45 to go in the third quarter. And you see how much Jim Donovan is looking down, shaking his head. It's just not been a day to day for Quincy Carter or this Georgia offense. That time not getting enough yards, but you got to credit LSU. They put a lot of pressure on him. That time they came with up to gut pressure. 
Georgia wanted to get the snap off, tried to get too many players on the field for LSU. A late switch by the Tigers, but a fair catch by Dominic Davis. And I think LSU missed one there. They hustled to get off the field, and it worked. A punt of 44 yards. Well, let's look around the SEC, presented by Morgan Keegan. First week that every team is playing inside the conference. The headliner, Alabama, heads down to Gainesville and Florida. The Crimson Tide will rely on Sean Alexander, while the Gators have Doug Johnson, who is on fire so far at 99. Florida off to a 4-0 record, number three ranking. Other games today, Mississippi State and Mandy. The Bulldogs leading in that one. Auburn at Tennessee should be interesting as well up in Knoxville. First and 10 for the Tigers. Neely tries to get something going offensively, but Neely continues to, he has not had a positive gain yet. If they give him a yard there, that will be his first positive gain. And let me count this up. One, two, three, four, five. And his six carries, that's his first positive yeah, game. Exactly. <laughs> and he barely made it back to the line of scrimmage. Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, much better football team this year, despite being beat, beat, being destroyed right now. Is <laughs> yeah, exactly. Word. 22 to nothing. Mississippi State's defense is giving up, on average, seven points a game. They have been dominating. Well, this Georgia defense has kept them in the football game because they have just come hard every play. Booty under pressure. The out pattern not there. Jamal Pack, the tight end, and this gives, gives us an opportunity to mention that Joe DiMaggio, Kyle Kipps, the two starting tight ends, if you will, both out with injuries, Dave, and it's really hurt this team. Kipps is a guy that's out with a bad back. He hurt while coughing. Joe DiMaggio has the Achilles, and he's out. Hurt his back, coughing? Yeah. Where'd you dig that up? <laughs> Everything you want to know about this game, right? Well, here comes a big one. Spread formation on third and nine. is caught, but it's well shy of the first down. Abram Booty catches the pass from his brother. I'm surprised Joss hasn't gone to Abram more today. Cat Burnett on the coverage. This is crossing pattern. You're going to see Burnett 23 come in there. Sit back in that pocket. Get a little bit of time. Look at Burnett right on that coverage. Good catch there by Booty. Good look in, but not enough yards. That was Abram's first catch of the game. Abram a little banged up this season. Blocked! The fourth kick blocked the balls wrestle free at about the 35. Jermaine Phillips comes up with it. And Georgia's in business. Charles Grant with the block for Georgia. Well, they have crushed down the center of this pocket. Look at this. Just run right down their throat. What a play right there. Came absolutely clear. Grant just came right in there. And, I mean, he looked like he came clean all the way to the up back. Again, watch this. Right up the middle. You're going to see nobody blocked. Look at the up back. He looks. There he is. And he gets that hand out there. Oh, Grant was right back there. Now, Georgia needs to capitalize. Saints. Keeps his legs moving down to the 20-yard line. A gain of eight. Thomas on the stop for LSU. And you see where they went. Right, that left side. Charles Smith misses the tackle that time, which adds to the yards. But again, look at this. Run to that left side. Get behind the big guys there. And Sanks just keeps those legs running. Boy, he looks like he's going to be a great one, Dave. Sanks now, 16 carries, 76 yards. Josh Booty being worked on the sidelines. Look at Sanks oh. play power football. Boy, that's just put your head down and bowl him over. That will stop the clock momentarily to move the sticks. But if that doesn't look like old Georgia football, oh. nothing will. That's memories of when your dad was doing this. Of course, just strength football, power. Don't try to fool them. Big man on big man, just blow them off the line. Well, the Georgia offense, the Georgia crowd, the Georgia cheerleaders. No, there's only 15 minutes left for Georgia to remain undefeated. LSU hanging tough on the road. Back for the fourth quarter in a moment. We go to the fourth quarter. 
LSU after getting whacked at home against Auburn two weeks ago, leading the 10th ranked team in the country on first and 10. Nothing doing for Jasper Sinks. Clarence LeBlanc with the stop. Here's a look at our John Hancock stats through three quarters today. Look at the rushing yards. Oh, that's incredible. Look at there. 153 yards. Wow. Sanks with 82 of those. Patrick Pass with a big 50 plus yard run for a touchdown. Georgia's only touchdown in this football game. Big down here. This is Quincy Carter time. He's got to come up with a pass right here. He's got to find a wide out. That's time. Hits Edwards over the middle. I believe that's Terrence Edwards' first catch of the afternoon. It is his first catch. And remember, he came in here with 21 catches, 340 yards, four TDs. He's averaging 16 yards a catch. That's his first one today. Yeah, LSU has really taken away the passing game. The outside game has been covered. They've, they've shortened it up, and they're allowing, going to allow that little curl. There are those numbers we were talking about. He had 196 yards in the first game, which was just three yards shy of the school record. Well, Quincy Carter wanted it. He's got it now. He's got single coverage. Pump fake over the middle to the tight end. Quincy Carter to Randy McMichael. Georgia takes the lead with 13-33 to go in the fourth. saw was one-on-one -on -one coverage you see the fake fake pump right there and then he picks up Michael McMichael shoes excuse me off the line of scrimmage coming off right off the tail of the uh, outside backer and what he did is he just just blew right on by the coverage that little fake pump really hurt him Matt Pines converts on the point after he is perfect 13 of 13 this year we have seen it time and time again when the quarterback pump fakes the results are usually pretty good for the offense. Georgia back out in front. Georgia takes the lead 20 to 16 on a touchdown pass from Quincy Carter to Randy McMichael. And there is Mr. Carter. 28 yards. Two minutes and 15 seconds. 12-yard touchdown. It was McMichael's first career touchdown catch. Boy, McMichael's a nice target coming off the line of scrimmage. He's lined up with a backer, and like I said, Quincy Carter, when he saw that one-on-one -on -one out in the flat, he knew his tight end was going to get open on just a go. Bang, he hit him. Brett Kerouac to lack it away for Georgia. To the corner, another solid kickoff by Kerouac. Davis to the outside. Tackle at about the 22, maybe 23-yard line. Jamie Henderson on the stop. Well, fans, Jefferson Pilot Sports now brings you our game video coverage on the Internet. That's right. Log on to jpsports.com after the game and watch video highlights from today's broadcast and all of our games throughout the season. Enjoy every great play whenever you want to, courtesy of jpsports.com. You can watch this entire game later on tonight. Josh Booty, 11 of 29. Handoff. Running game non-existent. Let's check in with Greg Bowser. Greg? Well, Dave, I'll tell you, the LSU offensive line has uh, been hit by injuries. Of course, John Compton, who was hurt early in the first half, uh, they took him in x-rays. He broke both bones in his leg. Uh, he's going to have to have surgery. He may be, he's probably done for the season, and Winey won't be back. So uh, this LSU offensive line have to move people around. Bob McConnell, the offensive coordinator, trying to piecemeal this thing together. Booty gets it away to the far side. Wansley on the coverage. Reggie Robinson with the catch. Well, you know, there's one guy out there for LSU. I can tell you that's a real competitor. And that is, of course, Josh Booty. He's the kind of guy, he's got fire in his eyes. He's waited a long time to get this opportunity, and he's still playing hard. This is a good passing catch. Little out, throws the ball, perfect timing. Again, pick up that positive yards, move the sticks. Josh Booty, he's not ready to give up. Here's a guy that threw for 11,700 yards and 126 touchdown passes in high school. That's quite a good high school, too. He got paid, paid $1.6 million to go play baseball. Isn't America a great country? Booty gets it.
It's Weck, but he hands it off for the pitches hit to Rondell Mealy, and Booty is down at the 24-yard line. He got hammered. Well, what this is is an underneath pass, and Booty just took a shot. As soon as he gave up the football, bang, he was just leveled. And you can see the coaching staff right here. They're scrambling, trying to get a quarterback warmed up. And it's Rohan Davey who started last week against Auburn but had a dismal outing with a couple of interceptions. Went 4 of 11 for 32 yards. Booty moving his head. That is a good sign. It looked like he just got his bell rung. And if you're Davey, what you do is you try to take a few snaps. You're staying there cold. You just want to take a few snaps from center. Now this is going to be underneath handoff where it's actually a little pass. You come out here now what you do is just pass the ball underneath. You don't even do Again, just keep on running the football, get outside, get the yardage, but uh, Josh Booty just gets leveled on the play. I think it was Witherspoon came in there and hit him. No? Oh, he just got hit up in the chops. Jamie Henderson. Jamie Henderson. Ooh. Watch Jamie Henderson come in here. They're coming there's Witherspoon, and of course Henderson is 31. He's just running up there. And you know, in fairness to the defense, you don't think about that underneath toss. So you think your quarterback's rolling out there and you're just trying to contain him and you're trying to get a tackle. It looked like Henderson's helmet got right underneath the face mask of Booty, and he's a little wobbly. Ah, oh, you gotta shake that off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned competitor. Yeah, oh, I, he is. If he has any sense about him, I have a feeling he'll be begging the coaches to get back in there. Well, what you do is you come to the sideline, get a little drink of water, try to gather your thoughts. He's taking quite a shot. But uh, he's up walking. Nothing seems to be hurt other than just taking a shot. So who knows? Maybe he can get back in this football game. And for Davey, it's a chance to redeem himself. Didn't get hit like that in baseball, did you, Josh? <laughs> you know, he's having a great time, though. Rohan Davey, number six. The Georgia call timeout. Wow, that's an interesting one. They've had all that time. How about this? That may get Booty back on the field. Yeah. We'll take a break. Find out. Georgia leads by four. Four. Josh Booty on the sidelines. For more on that, let's check in with Greg Bowser. Well, Dave, Josh Booty just got hit right under the chin. Uh, just kind of stunned him a little bit. The doctor say he's okay. He'll be back in the game. Jack Marucci, the director of athletic training. His partner Andy Parker down there for LSU working hard. So is that Georgia defense on first and ten. Davey hands it off. And Demetric Evans stops Mealy for another loss. I think I've, I don't think I've ever seen a guy lose more yards in consecutive carries than today. But Booty back on the field. Well, again, watch that hit up in the top of the helmet. That's just a that's a rattler right there. Jamie Henderson just came in there, and you have to give, you have to give what's given in a, in a football game. That's just a hard tackle. Booty throws, hit his brother right in the hands. Corey Robinson on the coverage, but Abram Broody, Booty, right wow. in the hands. I think what happened is Corey Robinson cut in front of him, and when he cut in front of him, he took his eyes off the football. If Booty comes down with this, he is clear down the sideline. Good fake, strong action now. Again, stay in that pocket. He gets hit again. But watch this right here. That ball hit him right in the hands. And I want to tell you that Robinson kind of guessed on it, went underneath. Josh getting a little upset. With Josh the... saying, get the heck out of here. Heck is probably a nice thing. Flag is down. It might be illegal substitution by LSU. That is exactly what it was. Yeah. There are some new rules that are enforced strictly by the SEC officials this year about concerning ball, legal substitution on the offense 13 men breaking a huddle five yard penalty still third down the main goal of the officials and that role is to quit deceiving yeah, with exactly. substitution patterns. well it's not fair what you do is break the huddle with 12 people run they, they run a couple to the sideline and then they run off well, that doesn't help the case any. Third down and 17. Ball rest on the 44. Booty in the shotgun. Three wide receivers. Georgia crowd in it. Booty steps up. Flag is down. Myers takes it inside. 
inside the 20 yard line or actually to about the 21 yard line but a flag is down back at the LSU 42. I'll tell you what I thought I saw it. I thought I saw Georgia jump off sides. I thought they anticipated the snap. If they've got motion on this play it's going to be a killer for LSU. Oh the guy didn't get up on the line of scrimmage. Oh. So it's going to go. LSU. Oh, that's one of the out wide out receivers didn't get up on the line of scrimmage, so he's actually in the backfield, and you only have six men on the line of scrimmage. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat. Third down. Wow. I mean, you look at a play like that, it's, yeah, it's a five-yard penalty. But the essence of the play is it's about a 40-yard penalty. And all it is is one of the wideouts on this side of the field did not get up on the line of scrimmage. What a killer. Third and 17, and they get it down to the Georgia 21. Now it's third and 22. To ask your offense to do it in consecutive plays is asking for a miracle. But Booty will try. Down the middle he goes to Myers. Nearly picked off. That'll be fourth down as Cap Burnett, the redshirt freshman from College Park, steps up to bat it away. Well, Burnett playing that center field position. He's a free safety, and on that, on that zone defense, he's free. Just reading the quarterback's eyes. Number 23, you're going to see him, Burnett. Right down the middle, Booty. He goes down the middle, and watch Cap Burnett. Cap Burnett just comes in there and bang, gets those hands up there. Watch him come right side, right there. Go high for the football. Michael Greer, who returned punts a year ago, returns that one. It's a couple of yards out of the return, but LSU. Clock continues to tick at 10.52, and the Tigers need another defensive stop. Georgia blocked a punt. Georgia took over at the 25 and advanced it in for a touchdown on their last possession. Next week, we've had any, if, if our <laughs> previous games are any indication, join us at 12.30 Eastern from Auburn, Alabama, an SEC Western Division matchup between the Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers. Well, how about Mississippi State right now, leading a very good Vanderbilt team at halftime, 25 to zip. Six, right side, 30-yard line, Trev Falk with the stop for LSU. Well, if you're thinking Georgia football right now, you're thinking Jasper Sanks, just give him the football. Let him run up there. Patrick Pass, just give him that football. Let him run up in there. Run that clock down. Just keep it ticking. I think Jim Donovan would love to get away in this football game with just a controlled drive here. Second down and four. Ball rest of the 31. Boy, look at LSU crowd in that line of scrimmage. Sanks bounces outside. Greer gets a good block. Sanks across the 40 to midfield. Another big run by Jasper Sanks. Clarence LeBlanc with the stop, a gain of 23. And did you see, did you see Quincy Carter on that play? Again, a good block there downfield. Michael Greer gets a great block on Booker. But I saw number 17 come into my screen here. Because Quincy Carter was on a dead run. Look at him starting to pass. Sanks taking it. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm coming. Look at him diving out here. That's great effort by your quarterback. Three straight games now for Jasper Sanks where he goes over 100 yards. He has 104 today. Charles Grant, the freshman at 6'3", 265. Picks up about four, but Dave, that's the first time Georgia's had a back go three straight games with 100 yards since the early 90s in Garrison Hurst. It has been a while since Georgia fans have seen this. Well, that's what your dad was saying, that Georgia dominance in running backs, the Herschel Walkers, the Garrison Hurst, those type of running backs they haven't seen here. And they love it. These fans love smash mouth, just grind it out, driving football. Rodney Hampton, Mars Tate, Terrell Davis. Georgia's had some great ones. Maybe Sinks will be the next. Jasper. It's close to the first down at about the 41 of LSU. Georgia now would love this running game to hold on to the football and chew up some of this clock, but 
This LSU defense has been asked to come up big time and time again today, and they've done so. Yes, they have. And you look at Sank's average per carry, 5.1. Hey, just keep on giving him the football. Let him just keep that clock going. Let Quincy Carter look up and let that time clock get down to the 3, 2, 1. Snap it. Boom. Sank's up in there. Keep the drive alive. For LSU, you got to come up with a stop. Somebody's got to break through. Somebody's got to get penetration. Third down and two. The option. Carter cuts it back. Gets the first down down to the 36. Thomas Dunson trips him up. for a first down for the Bulldogs. And look at Carter's emotion. That's what they want. That's what Jim Donnan and his staff expect out of him. You're seeing some emotion in this huddle. Look at this good decision by Carter right here. Back inside. Again, keep that football it's safe in his hands. And look at that emotion. I mean, that's what we have not seen out of Georgia. That's what they want. Georgia with 190 yards rushing as a team. Look at Sanks work. Driving his legs inside the 30. So many teams and fans want to see you air it out. But here in Athens, they cherish a good running game. Well, they did. And I'll tell you, Thomas Dunson met him in the hole and got carried for about three yards. Watch 52 come up here. He's going to hit him right in there, and he just gets carried for about three yards. Look at that. Continue. More yards, more yards. Drive and stretch. Ouch. Wow. 197 to 11. Sink. Look at him. Running inside the 10. If that doesn't remind you of one Herschel Walker, I don't know what will. A gain of 25. I mean, he runs over top Ryan Clark. He just puts his head down. There's nothing to tackle. He just pulls him over. Listen to this crowd. Look at this. Watch this. Put the head down. Boom. Just roll him over like a bowling ball. Sank's got arrested. Did you hear that crowd erupt when he came to the sideline? First and goal from the five. Pass already has one touchdown run. Flags are down. Could be a hold on Michael Greer, 36. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. Greer got up and kind of sheepishly looked around. Holding against Georgia. Six forty-five to go in the fourth quarter. Jasper Sanks last year on the offense. Play lost yard. Penalty from the previous spot. Ten yards. Fifteen. First down. Big break for LSU. But Jasper Sanks about to check back in. Ten rushes last year for sixty-five yards, no touchdowns. He's gone for 130 yards for South Carolina, 147 for Central Florida, and today Sanks is up to 139. You know what I do in this situation? Just give it right back to him. Let him run behind that left tackle, that left guard, Herndon and Jennings, and just let him come off that football. It's a strong, strength football. Well, as you ever needed a defensive stand, it's right here. Georgia facing first and goal from the 15 and a big play. Stopping Quincy Carter at the line of scrimmage. Kareem Mitchell, the junior at a Moss Point, Mississippi. Point, Mississippi makes the play. Well, that's a nice down the line play. Backside, you run him all the way down the line. You'll see 97 pop into your screen. He's coming all the way from the left of your screen, down the line, playing the line. Look at him. He's way back there. But if you keep on hustling when that quarterback turns around, there you are. Good hustle. This defense has been called on before. Can they stop Georgia with 5.43 to go in the fourth? It's the ninth play of this drive. Flags are down. Well, it wasn't the clock because the clock was at about five, six seconds. It's got to be a legal motion. Before the snap, wide out lined up in the neutral zone. On the offense, five-yard penalty still. Gilbert with the call. Georgia now 
second and 21, second and goal from the 20. Yeah, I know, that's what I was just going to say. They were down to what, about the six yard line, five yard line, and now they're out past the 20. Well, Bulldogs, 13 last week, 22 on the season coming into this game. 27. Over the middle. Over his tight end, McMichael, who already has a touchdown catch. But that brings up third down. Well, the one thing you don't want to do if you're Quincy Carter is make a mistake. Do not throw into double coverage. That's not a bad throw because he threw it long over top of the head of his tight end. But again, you don't want to force the football. Take that good field goal try. Keep that ball in play. Keep that clock ticking down five minutes. This has been a good drive for Georgia. Timeout. As one of the LSU players, Lionel Thomas, is down on the ground. He's running off. Eight tackles today for Lionel. I mean, he's had a stellar game from his outside linebacking spot. A sophomore from Opelousas, Louisiana. Jim Donnan would love to stick this in the end zone. A field goal makes this a seven point game. Georgia has to score a touchdown. It's third and goal from the 21. Five wide receivers. Quincy Carter about eight yards deep. Here they come on him. Over the middle. Edwards wants a flag and he gets it. definitely was held in the middle. Clarence LeBlanc was close to Edwards. Let's see if he was the guilty party. But how about that? That would give Georgia a first oh, down. Huge play. Unless they say the pass, which they did. Now what, Car what Carter wanted is, you see, Carter saw the blitz right there. You see from the right Holding of your screen. On a defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic. Right there was First the hold. That's what they call the hold. And you know what? If he doesn't hold him, that's six. Yeah, I think you're right. And you know that difference in that set because you talked about Carter being eight, nine yards back. That gets him a little bit more time to pick up those one-on-one -on -one situations. But a huge turnaround here for Georgia. They were going to have to kick a field goal. Now they've got a new set of downs. Now, I don't get fancy if I'm Georgia. I just use a Sanks pass right up the middle. Just run the ball. Jasper Sanks is inside the 10 to about the seven yard line as we approach the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. Georgia's offense has put together some great drives here in the second half. They ate up seven minutes on a touchdown drive earlier. Well, they have eaten this clock down under five minutes and it just keeps on ticking away. down to about the five. Well, it's been a long drive. Six minutes and 20 odd seconds for this offense to be on the field. And that's asking a heck of a lot. This defense that Georgia had, remember, yeah. first and goal on the five. Exactly. Seven plays ago. It seems exactly. Like. And the officials call timeout. The chains are down. See, they're concerned about whether or not it's first and goal because I was somewhat confused because they gave Georgia a first down at the 11, but the sticks on the far side of the field aren't up. Yeah, they're not up on the line so, of scrimmage. So it's like Georgia has to go 11 yards instead of 10. Yeah, exactly. It was not first and goal on the 11. When they gave them that field, when they gave them that penalty, it was first and 10 on the 11. So they had to make to the one yard line, I believe. I was somewhat confused when I saw that. Not that that's uncommon. But <laughs> what, that you're confused? <laughs> you're right. I hear you, buddy. You know me. You get a little dizzy every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> you took that shot just like Josh Booty, huh? In the booth. <laughs> <laughs> As my dad left the booth, he whacked me across the head. <laughs> just now getting back Very to automatic it. Automatic first down. The stake is on. The rear stake's on about the 11. Yeah, that's exactly what they were clearing up. The stake is on the 11-yard line. Outstanding. I'll give you some credit. What are you taking bows in the booth? Yeah, <laughs> Nobody could see me, right? <laughs> I could. Personal gratification. 4:30 to go here in the fourth. Our 
Parker. Along with Phillips, split the top of the screen. Edwards near side. Sank scissors single set back third and four. Quarterback draw. Carter. Touchdown, Bulldogs. But a flag is down at the six-yard line. Oh, and I think it may be. I may be lucky. Number 59. I think he may have got caught with a hold because he was the one they threw the flag right at him. Number 59, Miles Lucky is the center. Quincy Carter goes in untouched, and Jim Donnans, oh, he's got to just be besides himself. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, third down. Lucky is the center. See if he doesn't hold right there. Yeah, that's the arm. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And he's holding Brady James, number 11. Dave. Oh, I know. This will be the seventh play since Georgia had it first and goal on the five. Three penalties in this. There's 4-11. The good news for Georgia is the fact they're eating up clock. The bad news is they can't seem to score. Boy, Jim Donnan, you know, he talked about how many times they had, they shot themselves in the foot, so to speak. He keeps on shooting. He's running out of toes. Third and 14 when we come back. Quarter. The 12th play of this drive. It's eaten up six minutes and 49 seconds. It's third and 14 from the 15. Carter to the end zone. Nearly intercepted. I believe it hit Mark Roman right oh. in the chest. It hit him right in the chest. Roman looked like the intended receiver. Parker was the receiver. Roman the coverage. But Roman had the ball hit him right smack in the hands. It's a corner route. Come back to the post. Right there, look at Roman step in front of it. Oh, he's got it. Wow. Uh. Well, they say he's his best cover guy. And say it's the best hands. You know, you know how many plays we've had since it was first on the five? <laughs> Seven plays. 33-yard field goal at Pines. Just to make it a seven-point game. And it's good. But if you're L you you gotta feel like you've made a great defensive stand it's only a touchdown it yeah. was a touchdown before so no harm done well if you're LSU you've got three timeouts you've got almost four minutes to work you've got Josh Booty back there with that rifle arm Quincy Carter having a Pretty dismal day passing the football. 12 of 28 for 110 yards. They have done a job on stopping him. Meanwhile, Josh Booty being patted on the back by Rohan Davey, the man he replaced last week. Josh Booty, 13 of 33 for 176 with two INTs and a headache. Well, you know, I was just looking at Josh Booty there, and you don't expect your quarterback to be standing back there like that. I hope he's coming back. Uh, just kind of a, just a little, little different look. It's time to take a look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And Half Hines sneaks it inside the left upright, which was the culmination of a lengthy drive that ate up nearly seven minutes of clock time. 33-yard field goal, his third of the day. Georgia goes 13 plays at 60 yards. Let's check in with Greg Bowser. Well, I'll tell you, Dave, the mood on the LSU sideline is that the Coach Denard and his coaches told the offense that, hey, we're only down seven and we've got the football. They, they're going to try to get something going, and yes, Josh Booty is going back in. Well, he just looks so docile standing there. Maybe that's just the way he just relaxes. But usually you expect to see your quarterback with his helmet on, standing there talking to his offensive coach, head coach. Kerouac, who's done a nice job kicking off today for Georgia. The freshman out of Duluth, Georgia. Seven points. A lot of time. Three timeouts. And, you know, returning the football is Dominic Davis, who's done a nice job. Dominic, number two in the conference in kickoff returns, coming into this game, 27.6 yards per return. Takes it at the two. He's got some room. Dominic Davis to the 38-yard line. A return of 37 yards. Chad Holloman, or excuse me, Jamie Henderson, on the stop for Georgia. Henderson has made a few tackles on special teams today. Well, you're just going to see a good wall of blockers. They, they push him over to the left. It's a right return right up that seam, and you see him right there make good cut back underneath. Great yardage out to almost the 40-yard line. 
Now for Booty, don't panic. Don't try to push it where it can't go. Look for your open receiver. To the near side, Reggie Robinson. First down across midfield. Only 47 yards between the Tigers and a touchdown, a gain of 15. Next week, all I can say is, folks, <laughs> stay with us on JP Sports for our Bell South Game of the Week. Mississippi State takes on Auburn for the loveliest village on the plains next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central Time. Mississippi State right now having their way with Vandy, 25 to nothing. The 16th ranked Bulldogs, perhaps one of, if not the best defense in the country. The shovel pass, Mealy. Breaks a tackle. Mealy to the 35-yard line. How did he get out of that pile? He was stuffed in the backfield. Terrell Vieira makes the stop, a gain of 12. And that should move the sticks and stop the clock at 3.30. This was going to be that little that little shuffle pass underneath. And look, Mealy, number seven, boom. He's, I mean, he's stuffed right there, right? Just explodes at great acceleration. Picks up a first down, keeps those sticks going. And LSU is still alive. Again, don't try to force the ball in there. Take what the defense gives you. Out route is completed. Can't see who made the catch down there. Too many folks, but it looks like Ed Dangerfield covered by Corey Robinson. A gain of 11, another first down. And Kevin Ramsey's defense in the, the, you know, you hate to say it, Ben, but don't break mode. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, his team's well, giving up a lot of yards, yeah. but they kept teams out of the end zone. That's exactly what they've done. Look at those stats. 16-36, the two interceptions. But, uh, again, Josh Booty having a good day. Another first down. Tigers are in striking distance. Delayed pass to Mealy. He stopped for a loss of about four yards. Richard Seymour working hard for the Bulldogs. Well, that's an interesting call. It was going to be a slip screen right underneath. Hopefully, Mealy was going to come back and pick up some of those big blocks. They left those defensive linemen in. Georgia needs those big defensive linemen to step up. We talked a lot about Stroud today and Seymour. They need to get pressure there. For Booty, it's look to the wide open receiver. Find the one that's not covered. Don't force it into trouble. We've got four down territory here. It's second down, about 14 yards to go. A lot of time left, two minutes and 15 seconds. All six on the 28. Booty under center for one of the rare occasions. receiver that is the third interception of the season for Mr. Robinson well Booty did exactly what he didn't need to do they were going to try to fake that little that little sh shuttle underneath there they were going to try to run somebody under here and they see that fake and then he thinks he can go long but Georgia doesn't fall for it they're giving off yardage just a great recovery there Corey Robinson reading the eyes of the quarterback dropping back there not a bigger catch than that Georgia with nine interceptions this season. Their third today. I think Josh Booty probably just rushed it. He had plenty yeah. of time. It's the one thing that you didn't want to do in that situation. You want to take what the defense gave you, and they didn't give you that play. They were sitting back there waiting on it. You cannot force it. This is a well-coached team. LSU with three timeouts. I'm sure they'll begin to use those. With a timeout on the field, 150 to play. Georgia leads by seven. Sir? Georgia by seven over LSU. An LSU team that has been very stingy today, but Josh Booty perhaps rushed it a little bit on the interception. Oh, don't you know Georgia jumps off sides? And <laughs> Jim Donnan is probably going, guys, what in the world are you doing? What are you doing over there? Look like the flanker or the tight end on the top side just just jumped. And look at Jim Donovan. <laughs> Ball before the snap. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. 
his teams have repeatedly been one of the least penalized in the entire country, and it's got to kill him today that they have eight penalties for 50 yards. That gives them 35 on the season. Well, the problem this week was they were really going to come down hard on him, and they, of course, the loss of Coach Watson. So you can't come down hard. You really can't get your team to focus on it. They've had terrible distractions this week, have not had good practices. Carter under pressure just falls down. That's a big play because LSU can use a timeout here. Exactly. They're, they're marching the wrong way. Interesting. Going to try a quarterback, a little play pass action. He's going to come out here and throw a pass. With 140 on the clock, I think he just run it. Again, this is a play pass. Come out here, he trips right there and kind of gets just in the wash. Uh. Wow, third down and 18 now. Well, it's time now to see our Amico play of the game, and it was reminiscent of days gone by. 1980, perhaps. Remember a guy named Herschel Walker? Well, it's 1999, and this guy's a sophomore. Jasper Sinks barrels over an LSU defender on his way to a 25-yard game for the day. Jasper, 26 carries, 148 yards. Kentucky, woo, what is going on with the Razorbacks? Mm. Kentucky by 14, Mississippi State and Vandy. By the way, uh, Dusty Bonner continues to add to his touchdown totals. He has four TD passes today. Wow. That's <laughs> pretty daggone good. And we'll see them next week. Big play for Georgia. 142 on the clock. Big play for LSU. Georgia 6 of 17 on third down. To hand it off to Sinks. He gets back to close to the original line of scrimmage. Brady James on the stop for LSU. And well, the Tigers will use a timeout. Georgia out of timeout, but that's pointless at this particular spot of the game. Well, you know, you start talking about clock. You know that uh, LSU is going to get this football back with over a minute and a half left. If Georgia can hold on to this game, this may have been the coming out party for one Jasper Sinks, number 28. He has been sensational. Gets six by running over some Tiger defenders. He just runs over top of him. 25 oh. yards by running over Tiger defenders. Well, and he hasn't fumbled. He hasn't given up the football. He hasn't played it foolishly. We look at Jasper Sanks. Look at that. 5.7 yards. That's the important thing. Holding on to that football. No fumbles. Quite a day. Josh Booty has not had the, the kind of day maybe he was expecting, but it's been one of those things where every time he steps back to throw a football, he's learning something. Oh, he is. Now, three interceptions hurt him, but 209 yards. But more importantly, what I'm saying is he's going to get the ball back with about a minute and a half left. That's a lot of time. I know he doesn't have timeouts, but realize that the clock stops every time they move those chains. Davis. Nowhere to run. He gets it to the 38 with 126 to go. A fun of 43 yards by Wynn Cop. Tackle made by Jermaine Phillips, who's had a great day on special teams today. That's his third tackle on special teams. But Josh Booty, who didn't play football for five years, now has to lead this team with 126 to go. 61 yards. And it's not an impossible task. Because again, every time you move those chains, you get that clock stop. So he can hurry up offense. He's got wide receivers. He's got a rifle arm. Georgia needs to come after him. No timeouts for either team. Mealy just pounded. See, I don't, I don't like that play. Bruce <laughs> Dron just hanging right on Mealy. Yep. I don't like that play. I'm going to go downfield if I'm LSU. Do some curls in that 12 to 15 yard period. Uh, you know, that length of play where you can move those chains and stop the clock. Second down at 10, 120 to go in the fourth quarter. Every play has got to go at least 10 yards right now. You've got to be throwing the first down territory. Three-man rush by Georgia. Booty steps up in the pocket. Flag down. It looks 
like it's going to be holding against LSU. Josh Millard just taken to the ground. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, what happened that time is Georgia's guessing the snap count. They're just getting off on the fly right now. They don't have to worry about the run. Pulling by the offense. Ten yard penalty. Spotted a snap. Repeat. Second down. Clock starts on the ready for play. And next week, coming to you from Auburn, the Bulldogs and the Tigers, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Central, Wayne Matkin, talented sophomore quarterback, will lead the Bulldogs. Jeff Klein, the redshirt freshman to lead the Tigers. Should be interesting from Auburn next week. Second down, 19. Rudy steps up. Pressure from the backside. Couldn't get it off in time. You saw David Jacobs, a freshman out of Atlanta, just continue to work and drive and finally caught up with booty. Well, you got to throw fly patterns now. You got to hope for that one on one situation. Again, this is just too much time. Come all the way around the outside. The quarterback steps up and then you come from the backside. When you've got that much time, that's David Jacobs, 99. You're just taking too much time. You got to throw those flies. Get that one on one pattern. George in a three deep zone. And I mean, they are way off the line of scrimmage. 25 yards deep. Booty steps up down the side. Now that zone dropped off so far that he threw underneath the coverage. A gain of 32 and a huge first down. Only the third first down for LSU today in 14, 15 tries. Boy, that was a great throw by Booty. Look off the coverage a little bit. Now he's back in striking distance. He's got 45 seconds left. They can, they can attack the end zone from here. Booty goes over the middle. Throws behind his receiver, Robinson. See, he's even throwing too short. You got to throw a little bit longer. You got to throw in that 18 to 20 yard range so that you get a couple tries at the end zone. When you start thinking of those timeouts, don't, doesn't he wish he had them right now? Had to use them to stop the clock on the last defensive stand. Second and 10, ball rest on the 38. 39 ticks left. Pressure, Booty over the middle. Oh. Abram Booty couldn't come up with the catch. Once again, Booty, Josh throws behind the receiver. I want to tell you, I was watching Reggie Robinson, number four that time, and he was on a streak to the post. Ooh, I don't know that I wouldn't have thrown it. Quincy Carter leading the charges. Leading the cheers. Josh Booty. Three interceptions today. He has thrown a lot of passes in two games. 58 last week against Auburn. Third and ten. Might be going to Robinson. Booty. Nearly picked off, but I think Georgia was out of bounds on the near side. Corey Robinson and Jarrell Myers was the intended receiver, but Robinson looking for a second interception today. Did not come up with it. So it's fourth and 10. 27 seconds. Dave, do you go for the first down or do you go for the end zone? I think here? you go for the end zone. In this situation, you got 27 seconds. If you're going to go, I, I mean, I've looked several times at Reggie Robinson, number four on the streak. He's in that slot. Robinson four times in a row. I hate to tell you that, but I saw him in that slide and four times he was open. I didn't know if Booty would find him. Now, do they go for two? Do they go for two or go for one? They are going to go for two. Oh boy. Well, that guarantees no overtime. With 18 seconds left, LSU tries to win it. He's got his tight end. Booty buys time, throws back. Knocked down. Will Witherspoon, the sophomore. And Georgia will win the football game. Another unbelievable finish. He's got two people.
people wide open in the end zone. He just has to find. Look top of your screen. Look at them all waving. Throw it up here and watch Weatherspoon. He must be he must be 40 inches off the ground. <laughs> Look at the leap. Watch Weatherspoon. Now here comes Booty. Throw back. It's right of your screen. Watch Weatherspoon get up. Look at this. Oh my goodness gracious. He's got Mealy sitting out there, and look at Josh Booty. I'm going to tell you something. Witherspoon will play in my basketball team. That's the biggest play I've seen. Incredible play. My, oh, my, Dave Rowe. Oh. Well, you have to give Jerry DiNardo a lot of credit going for it. And Booty had it. I mean, he had it. Flat out had it. Talk about a game of inches. That's the game of inches. Let's go back and look at that <laughs> touchdown reception. You had been saying all game or the last series, Reggie Robinson is open. Look for him. He wears number four. They found him right on the goal line. Touchdown. And credit Georgia. Now, this is an interesting. This is the onside kick alignment. You've got 18 seconds left. Uh-oh. We had excessive celebration, I think. Exactly. That'll move it here. If LSU recovers this, they've got a shot at it. Yeah, they got another field goal try. Now, what you want to do is you want to kick that ball on the ground to get that real high bounce so that it goes way up in the air. Now, you've got some people that are going down trying to knock down the receivers, and you got some people that are trailing behind trying to get the football. This is practiced all the time. See if he doesn't get that big hop. You try to top the ball when you kick it. It's That's a kick. High. Did he catch it? I think he's out of bounds. I think he caught it out of bounds. The hop was perfect. Ryan Clark grabbed it, but he was out of bounds. It'll be Georgia football. And that was nearly the perfect scenario. Oh, it was the perfect kick. The, the hop was perfect. It came up, but when he caught it, he did not come down bound. Watch again. Watch the big hop right here. There's the hop now. You're right there for it, right? You go up, but you're out of bounds. There's Joshua, the hop again. Watch 98. I believe it's not. Excuse me. That's 48 for Georgia. Tavares Johnson, the tight end, who pushed Clark out of bounds. Yeah, that was a heads-up play. Because if he had caught that, he may have come down and bound. That'll do it. Georgia. Dodges a bullet. LSU laid it on the line. Jerry DiNardo gambled and went for two. He was only inches away from stealing a win on the road in Athens, Georgia. The Bulldogs remain undefeated. They go to 4 0 and 2 0 in SEC play. 23 22. Back in a moment. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Bell South, the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By Morgan Keegan, raising capital for the South for 30 years. By Payday, can't get enough peanuts? Get a Payday. Sweet caramel, tons of salty peanuts. By Amico Ultimate. Amico, you expect more. Jasper Sanks was the story. 27 carries, 156 yards for the Bulldogs as they win. Patrick Pass opened up the Georgia scoring with a 58-yard touchdown pass. But it was a near miracle by LSU. But the Tigers fall short. For my partner, Dave Rowe and Greg Bowser and our entire J.P. crew, Dave Neal saying so long. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. Shifted a little left. Quincy looks, looks right down the middle. Touchdown! Quincy on the next down to Sanks at left guard. Oh, he ran over a man to 20 to the 15 to the 10 down to the five. Booty underneath, second and long. Looks, looks, and goes and throws a long pattern. And we intercept it in the end zone. LSU's going to try to win with a two point play. Takes a toss sweep. Bootlegs out to the right. 
He's going to try to throw. We're chasing him. We miss him. There he's got a man open. And we block it. They run a man up the middle. They're coming on the corner. Quincy fires. Touchdown in the corner. Steps and looks and fires. And we intercepted Harris on the 35. Quincy's going to take it and drop back. And going to run a keeper. Touchdown. Welcome to the Jim Donnan Show. You said, Coach, you beat LSU, but you said a couple of times on Saturday that Georgia might not be as good as everybody thought they were. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, coming in the year, we thought we had high expectations, but, you know, we've got to meet those expectations and play uh, more consistent football. It's great to get the win. Our defense really played outstanding in the second half, uh, except for the last drive. Offensively, we did a lot of good things running the ball. We didn't put the ball in the end zone like we need to, and uh, our kicking game continues to do some good things, but we're just kind of helter-skelter sometimes, and, you know, we got to get more uh, unified, and that's what I meant by that. Just before the end of the third quarter, Jasper Sanks really ran tough, got the crowd into the game. How much, uh, how important was that? Well, Jasper's had a good year. You know, he's got to be among the leaders in the conference rushing the ball. I was glad to see Pat uh, Patrick made a great uh, run back on a kick and also a long run. And uh, if we can continue to run the ball with that kind of authority, it's going to take some pressure off of pass protection. Uh, we didn't have very good protection uh, uh, on Saturday. They really got some vertical pressure on Quincy, and uh, we were having a hard time uh, uh, getting the ball off, so we went more to a running game. Georgia won the toss, you chose to receive, and you haven't done that too much. What was the reason? Well, you know, we thought we could get off to a good start, and we did. Uh, here's a little pass out here to Thad Parker. Uh, you know, our kickoff coverage team has not been one of the best things we do, so that's why we took the ball. Here's uh, Jasper on the lead play. Uh, we got a man in motion here and trying to hit the tight end down the seam, and a great catch by Randy McMichael, but we end up uh, not making it, and uh, right here, we were in great position to down the pun and uh, didn't execute. Uh, our defense was very salty here. Demetri Evans from uh, Haynesville, Louisiana, starting his first game against LSU, and uh, pretty good pressure on Booty, and uh, there's a sack by Marcus Trout. Think the baseball layoff hurt Booty? Well, I thought he was pretty good today. Uh, he, he looked pretty good. Uh, here's uh, Patrick Pass. Uh, on a great punt return, good blocking by everybody involved and uh, gets us in good field position. And uh, good to see Patrick, he had a really good game. Uh, looked like we had him offside here, but uh, Jasper's running behind our left side there, good blocking at the point of attack. Uh, we, we got a, a wing formation. We throw the ball in here to Randy McMichael. Uh, was clearing out and Javaris catches it. Uh, here's uh, Quincy. Uh, Got to make it on fourth down and he does it. Uh, great run and uh, picks up the f first down. Uh, throw a little uh, under route to Javaris. Uh, glad to see him hold on the ball. Uh, it's three straight games with just one turnover, which you got to keep that up. Half Hines converts and it's three to nothing. And first running back. Run a tall sweep here and uh, got great pressure from Boss Bailey and uh, Brandon Miller and Dustin Lucky and uh, run a little flare screen and uh, we had man coverage on and uh, the guy faked like he's blocking and our linebacker ended up uh, letting him go. Uh, another great play at the point of attack by our defensive front, uh, David Jacobs. Uh, they come in.